everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Travis Oates. Yes, welcome Travis. Travis is from a competitive channel. Ha! <laughs> Competitive? Yes, with competitive fighting. <laughs> no, not so much. Uh, in fact, you were just on the competitive channel. I, I didn't say competitor. Oh, well, I didn't no. say competitor. I said competitive. I'd have to have a lot more viewers before I became competitive. No, you're just competitive with people. Sure, uh, sure. No, a comedy <laughs> board game channel. Also, uh, death defying. They played games next to volcanoes. They yeah. played games underwater. They have uh, played games uh, while skydiving. While, while skydiving, sky mm -hmm. that was our premiere video. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yes, and also all kinds of stuff. This is above board. We're talking about to search above board. It is the first thing that will pop up YouTube. I check. Yes. <laughs> well, it's good. You know, you yeah. always no, always, it's good. Yeah. Let's sure. make sure Mike is in. Yeah, let me, let me, yeah. There you go. They want to hear your yeah, okay. dulcet tones. Excellent. There we are. There, there we go. go. So anyway, Travis is here and visiting in studio. We're doing some stuff together. And while he's here, we thought we would talk about our top 10 memorable gameplays. Since Travis is from L.A., yeah. all movie stars all the time. Yeah. All, all 10 of them are movie stars. I'm yeah. a SoCal kid myself. Mike is going to drink a shot of vodka every time Travis name drops. <laughs> oh, you're gonna all right, give smashed. me the funnel, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so... Okay, so how did, my, how, did, how did it end up being Mike who gets this uh, horrible punishment? Yeah. <laughs> See, you can, uh, I'll make sure to throw a little bit your way, Thank too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like a baby bird. <laughs> Ooh, it's slimy. That's better than what I thought the baby bird was going to do. You were coming out of your hand. Well, I could regurgitate the vodka into your mouth. It's See. still vodka. This is how the dice It's also how you sanitary, right? How do you think they make it the first time? <laughs> Agave? I don't think so. Nah. I almost, I almost want to apologize now to these uh, backers from Kickstarter that we're going to thank. Um, Dagmar and the Slimbo Board Game Group. Ooh. Slimbo! Julie John Adams, a Slimbo. Bolshevik, yep. Ben Lindsay and Camden Grossman, Patrick Shower, yeah, Nicholas Patrick. Blackburn, <laughs> Alex Saroy, and Steve and Jenny from Riverside, California. Sweet! I think I, know, I think I know that Steve and Jenny, by the way. Steve I think they're Jenny friends of ours. Name dropping. <laughs> I'm going, yeah, yeah. going, going, They're also major movie stars. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be talking about ten, 10 memorable gaming experiences, plays. I don't think, in particular, I'm, I'm sure I've missed some stuff, right? I've missed mm -hmm. some things. Oh, yeah. And you might be watching this and saying, oh, I know you're going to put that game we played together, Tom, on the list. It was number 11. <laughs> All right? It was number 11 Every on the list with you. Mm -hmm. We've also done this list once in the past, at least me and Z have. And so I watched that a little bit afterwards and realized I had some crossovers. There was some I missed from that list. And, you know, I was like, whatever. Whatever. I did not watch it. I did yeah. not go back. I just made it, and I'm going with it. That's it. Might be a, there might be a bunch anyway. of crossover. Well, yeah. My short-term memory. It's probably what a bunch of crossovers. This afternoon. <laughs> many, many, yeah, many of these are recent. Now, here's my thing, is that I know that I'm pigeonholed a bit on this channel as being the edgy guy. The right? edgy, attractive I'm edgy guy. guy. Yeah, Look, yeah. I get it. I'm dangerous. But this particular list, I found myself being very sentimental. Oh. You're going to get Am my sentimental cry? side. If you don't, we're going to have talking afterwards. There's going to be an issue. By snack? talking, he means <laughs> slot of vodka. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's oh, right. That would make me cry. Then yeah. I'm going to yeah. blame it on the smear. I would be a sloppy mm. drunk. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know? No, I've never been drunk. You've never been drunk? Actually, I've never ever had any alcohol ever of any kind. That's no, correct. rubbing alcohol. Wow. <laughs> oh um, yeah, if, unless you count Nyquil. I'm sure. going to tell you that you've had. Have you had chocolate covered cherries before? Not that kind. You've had alcohol, sir. Okay, maybe I did, but that's not the same thing. <laughs> and I remember that night. All these cherries are good. <laughs> this is the best <laughs> cherry I've oh, ever had. That's the night he slapped that man. <laughs> Five sheets to the window. These cherries are delectable. <laughs> well, we Running in the nude. More cherries. I require more cherries. If you're watching this, by the way, one week from today, Dice Star East goes live, and you can have yes. some of these memorable gameplays there. And the cruise at Dice Star West, registration for those is great. You want to play with us? You want to play games from the greatest gaming libraries on earth? Check out Dice Tower East, Dice Tower West, and Dice Tower Cruise. Bring Tom Cherries. All right, <laughs> let's get started. We're going to start here in no particular order, but with the lowest, Mike. Oh. 
All right. Uh, wow. Thank you get for that introduction, Get your Tom. tissues ready. Th yeah. These are <laughs> sentimental. <laughs> these are sentimental. I'm ready to weep. My number 10 is not sentimental in the least, uh, and you know that because it involves Joey Evans. My number 10... Wow, Joey made your list? That's pretty he did, nice. He did. He so did. Wow. Modern. He did. Joey didn't make my list. Well, also... Yeah, that's true. Have you ever had a game experience uh -huh. where yes. within the first five to ten minutes, you can tell that somebody at the table is either so completely lost, <laughs> so completely miserable, uh -huh. and so completely re regretting the life decisions they've made that led him to this point. Uh -huh. This happens every testing Tuesday night for me. Okay. We played a game of Zoo Vadis. Oh, that's in your top ten? Yes, baby! Hey, I was there! Gotta get Canizia in there somehow. Right. Here's the thing. I've never seen Joey say a bad thing about a game, even when he gives it a two. Okay? <laughs> Joey is basically like, what? he's gonna find <laughs> he's gonna find something nice to say about any game he plays, right? Um, the game where you stick the thing into your mouth and you have to talk with that. He found it delightful, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Zuvadis, we, we explained the game, we taught the game, and you could tell that he was like a deer in the headlights. Like, he had no idea what was going on, and something about it brought out the most vicious side of me. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up, because I was not going to let this go. I have never seen... I, so Joey's like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And Mike's like... Here's what you want to do, Joey. Do this. <laughs> I'm like, don't listen to this man of yeah. evil over here. I'm like, Joey, look. I'm going to take it. <laughs> come on. Come on in, Joey. I'm going to take it easy on you, Joey. Here's what you want to do. On your first turn, you want to do something like this. Now come kneel next to him. Which <laughs> was basically. And, and punch it. And, and, to, and to fill you in, his in his top ten list of his best gaming experience. Yes. I just want to clarify this No, I said most memorable. Oh, okay. It's most, most memorable. memorable. But best. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying that the time he played with you where you were absolutely miserable yes. is ten on his top he ten. He hated wanna... everything about it, and yeah. I never see. I didn't know if Joey was capable of hating games. Do me a favor, Joey. Can you recreate that uh, picture right there? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you can do it. There we go. Yes! Perfect. Right. right. So... Mike Wiz, because we're name dropping, his came in the room. Uh, That's yeah. right. That's right. Look, it it just it, I know it's it's this is recency bias. It's just happened, you know, within the last couple of months. But it was just something about that that just has stuck in my memory. You know, a Joey can dislike games. You know, and look, um, this was after a long day of a spectacular. Yeah. Also, yes. I want to point out he was at his most was vulnerable, hard. and I like, took every opportunity to exploit I've never his seen vulnerability. You that mean in a game, I was because terrible. Never, um, he was like just he was right he was like the shyster like the, the guy from Shakespeare the, the the guy wanted to cut the guy's heart out with a pound of flesh okay Shylock sure. that guy Shylock. oh god yeah yeah no, like I was uh, wicked and cruel you were Machiavellian I was, I was Machiavellian I was definitely that I was also mean also he won I'm, I'm looking uh, forward to finding out what other games you guys have played that Joey has hated that are in your top ten <laughs> Because this is a... This, I didn't uh, have that. Joey never went through my mind when I made my top okay. 10. Though. Yeah, all right. So that's my number 10. <laughs> the complete and utter wow. destruction. The wow. the The sucking of joy. <laughs> Jeez. From Joey Evans. <laughs> to my benefit. Oh, my God. Schadenfreude. All right, Z. Okay. Well, there's not going to be any German in mine. <laughs> oh, wait, there is. Oh! My number 10... Is from a German designer called Friedman Fries. Mm. Was he at the is, table? You got he a name was not. Okay. No, he was not. This is a Power Grid, the card game memory. We were at Essen. I forgot this game existed. Uh, me too. <laughs> wow. We were playing this game in up in the hotel room the evening that we procured it while we were at Essen. You were there, and I was there. And Jason Levine was there. Oh and I boy. believe Eric Summer was in that game as well. And the thing that made it amazing and memorable was in between Jason's turns, he would take a nap. He would <laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally we were quite tired. Well, Jason does so he doesn't sleep at conventions. He'll right. Stay up no, early right, right. He'll sleep. get up early. He's like, I'm not tired at all. 
He sleeps through the rules, too, and also wins by 100,000 points. Well, here's the thing. He was sleeping in between <laughs> his turns. We were literally all kind of dreary-eyed and playing. And oh, I was actually not there. It was Sam. Because this was when you were in that house. Oh, I thought you were there. I okay, there, Sam was story. there. It feels like I was and there. And we like would then, when it would be Jason, we'd be like, Jason, <laughs> Jason, take your turn. <laughs> Do a thing. Go to sleep. <laughs> and after the game, he crushed it. <laughs> he crushed everybody playing at the game. He destroyed us by quite a few points. And I just remember being like, he's an unstoppable machine. He mm -hmm. cannot be beat. I mean, halfway through... Couldn't you guys, like, when he falls asleep, plot against him? We were, we were too bleary-eyed for mm -hmm. that, I think. We weren't clear-headed enough for that. He could have just moved his stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know. Jason. <laughs> oh, He'd be yeah. like, oh, we could have taken this out and <laughs> yeah. put regular power grid. Like, Jason, your turn. <laughs> he probably would have been like, oh, yeah, sure. Bam. Bam. And don't still won. And yeah. won a second won. game. Yeah, <laughs> Win two games while asleep. Uh, anyway, my number 10 is Jason crushing it. While napping, playing Power Grid, the card Thank game. Thank you, Gibby. That's fantastic. It is just Jack. kind of mind-blowing stuff. <laughs> He's that good. It's ridiculous. Well, uh, uh, my 10 uh, doesn't involve Joey or Jason, <laughs> but does involve someone in this room. Tom Vassell. No. Yourself? No, wait, yes. Roy Kennedy. I think all of them have to involve Two yourself. Two people in this Roy room, then. Yeah. Kennedy. Unless it was Roy Kennedy. That's Ooh, correct. The name dropping has increased. Yes, oh, the name dropping. I'm already boy. talking about celebs. Uh, and this is this is where uh, I got an opportunity to play uh, Last Light. What? Uh, um, with, uh, with, with Roy. This was on uh, the Dice Tower Cruise. Mm. And I had played Last Light uh, previously. A couple times, I think. Uh, we, the first time we played it was at um, Dice Tower West, which is the first time we ever met. Yeah. Uh, and, and he had just come up and he had, uh, Stop Thief was the box. And uh, I had known him a little from the channel and I was like, hey, you got Stop Thief. And I offered to play Stop Thief. <laughs> and he's like, actually, this is not Stop Thief. This is a game of my own design. That's and a nice I, bait and switch. Yeah, yeah, right? And, get, and get then he was like, last would, 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 you, would you be willing to play this with me? And it was one of these things of like, <laughs> well, now I... Now you're in it. Well, I can't say no. Right, right, right. Because, uh, you know, and... Uh, this is not you, the cruise. That room's too big for the cruise. West. Because oh, okay. uh, you're you're nervous when somebody says that. Oh, yeah. I created this. I made this game, and you're like, oh boy. And so I sat down to play it, and it was. And I've said this numerous times, so I'm not uh, I'm I'm not uh, saying this just because we're. It was the best game I played at Dice Tower West that year, and I was so impressed with this game. And so, uh, uh, Roy, help me out a little bit on this. So you were, I think, trying to sell the game to to a company. Uh, at that time, that was super early on. Yeah, well, no, no, I mean, not the first time we played, but the, the time I'm talking about it in the yeah. cruise. I was pitching it so Arcane Wonders could see it. You were pitching it to Arcane Wonders, and so uh, Roy comes up to me and he says, uh, uh, you're like one of the only people on the boat that has played this game, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm showing it off, you know, could you come help me do this? And I was really honestly touched by the mm. fact that you would ask me to help you do that because I know how much it meant to you and I knew how much you know and to it was fair, a, I regret it huh to be fair I regret it <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go uh, you, what was funny too is it, so I said yeah I play and then about halfway through the game Roy's like Stop crushing the people I'm trying to sell the game to. Because I was just, because I was the only one there besides him, and he was trying not oh, so to this win. This is a brag. Yeah. No, it wasn't. There's already been one, so you're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't so much a brag, but I, I was doing very well at the game because I had played it previously. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was really making Roy nervous. Uh, but as you can tell, because it came out uh, from uh, Arcane Wonders, oh no, it didn't. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that worked out. But it, it worked out for him. But that, that was an amazing experience. Uh, and I was very touched by the fact that, that he asked me. And it's the first time ever, to my knowledge, that I have been involved in like the selling of an unsold game in any way, shape, or form, and that was just very exciting to me. All right. I enjoyed it. Hmm. All right, well, my number 10, I have no names to drop because I cannot remember the people I played with. Hmm. Um, this is, <laughs> no, this is like 15 years ago, and I was on an army base, uh, Camp Casey, and we were running game base for the soldiers at this point in time, and I had a newish game at the time, which was uh, Ghost Stories. Pretty. Oh. 
And we had played Ghost Stories. Remember, I brought it up there. We'd lost. I was like, play it again. We lost. Play it again. That's I don't normally do that. I don't do that now at all. Actually, if I lose now, I'm like, what else we got? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so we, and then we finally won. And, but I remember the following week, I brought it back again. I'm like, we got to play this again. This time I want to win. And it just was one of those games. It came down to a single die roll that everyone stood up, like the whole table stood up. And what made it even better was other games were being played and the, the waves of jealousy of like yeah. how exciting our game was. But we just, it was such a moment. I'll never forget that. Again, I forgot the soldiers I was playing with. It was a great time. Sure, but it's been a sure. while. But I, don't, I just remember, and we needed to roll, uh, you know, one color, which is a 33% chance on the mm -hmm. dice to kill that final ghost. And we pulled it off. And it was fantastic. So. Very cool. Ghost stories. Nice. Oh, oh! Go Ta -da. Well, that's an interesting transition. I don't think I've seen that one before. He's a that's new. brand new. One of our uh, fans, Edward, made him for us. Wow! Congrats to Edward. I thought that looked very cool. All right. Um, so much of my list, I just have to put that out there, is going to involve Joey. Since I've been at the Dice Tower, and uh, <laughs> and Joey's always implied, um, <laughs> just because you know they're, we tend to have unique opportunities. You don't need to apologize about. I'm just saying. I'm just he's saying. saying he's going to be boring. The next nine are really boring. <laughs> my number nine is the time I played Power Grid, the card game. <laughs> Can't go more boring than that, folks. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. My, uh, my number six will shock you. <laughs> my number nine was um, playing a, uh, a sequel to a game I already liked at the publisher's studio mm -hmm. pretty recently with Tom. This was playing Mythic Mischief and all of the different modes and trying out those new... Wow, the bragging. He's going to talk about how he won most of the games, too. Well, I don't want to be the one to say that I was in the semifinals. I'll leave that to Tom and 90% of Reddit to do that for me. I was uh, a savant. I was a savant. Yeah, yeah, I often do think of you. When I think savant, right. I do think of you. You do, right? Especially <laughs> I the, really do. Especially the first part. Yeah. Um, no, this was just a great experience. A... Uh, I had not been to their uh, studios before. They have a really nice setup there. It was um, the they, all the people there were absolutely lovely to work with, and and I had met uh, a couple of them before. But it was just neat to be in their space, playing the game, using these different characters that we hadn't played before. Um, actually, also, I mean, getting a chance to to kind of be in Nashville and check that out. But that's not. The gaming, the gaming experience was just a lot of fun. Played against you, played with you as a team, Did played against him? other people. <clears throat> um, I don't think beat him is the right term. I think we need to kind of up the ante there. Okay. Uh, decimated, maybe? Obliterated? Oh, the one that's on air, yes. Uh -huh. But the two before that, I whoop Mike around the block. Yeah, so I, I'm what they call a primetime player. <laughs> okay, sure. Practice? Sure. We're talking about practice? Turn the camera on, you're going to see the skills, all right? Wow. Okay? They made us both play with factions we hadn't played with yeah. before. Yeah, that's true. That's why I lost. Yeah, no, I had a really good time. Great people, great environment, a game I already knew I enjoyed. It's it stuck with me. I've really enjoyed that experience. Hold on to your hat, because his first one was beating Joey, his second one's beating me. I know, it's I, coming up at some point. I, I'm going <laughs> to tell you. Thankfully, I've never lost to Mike in anything. I just want to be on the record here. I was not planning to mention that I completely destroyed and uh, like setting it up, humiliated like. Tom Vassell. <laughs> Two hours ago, we played a game and he beat me, so if that's on the list, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Might be it's a, a bit. I don't think we yeah, played, did no, we? No, we didn't. No. No, but way, way to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's how you commit. That's yeah, right. yeah. When yeah. you're, when you're yes looking. Yes and no. <laughs> exactly. I'm the human punchline. That's yeah, what they call yeah, me. Yeah. All right, yeah. my number nine was a weekend of gaming that I had that was particularly memorable, but it involved a single game. It was Sleeping Gods, which is oh. funny because it just got mentioned out there yeah. a little bit ago. Interesting. Um, and I played Sleeping Gods. It was set up, and I started playing that weekend, and it stayed on the gaming table through Saturday, through Sunday. You soloed this? No, no. I played uh, at home, uh, and it was great because I could just leave it up, take meal breaks and stuff, 
and then come back to it. It was a two-player game, but it just got, again, the whole, it was from start to finish, which is it was about 13 hours, mm. and they go anywhere from like maybe 12 to like 16 hours. Yeah. It's about like a full play of it. And you don't see everything by far when you do something like that. But I just really enjoyed, it's not the kind of thing I do at all, leaving a game set up, especially something that lasts that long, and take a break, go away, have a meal, do whatever, and come back and just pick up mm -hmm. from where I, we've stopped. You know what I mean? And I really like that. It's something that's probably hard to replicate, something you shouldn't chase. Like, and if you chase right. that experience, you kind of, right. it's not going to happen again. You know what I mean? But the stars kind of aligned, and the game was superb. And there's going to be a, a few experiences like that of just kind of the perfect setting with the, mm -hmm. you know, kind of everything, everything lining up just right. And Sleeping Gods, through a weekend, was one of those experiences. It was just fantastic. So, my number nine, Weekend of Sleeping Gods, beautiful experience. Hmm. It does sound like a, um, a movie title. The Weekend of Sleeping Gods. The Lost Weekend of Sleeping yeah, Gods. Yeah, The Lost, you're right. That, the that's Lost the word. Weekend sure. of Sleeping Gods. Trademarked, Dice Tower. Mm -hmm. I I think maybe Sleeping Gods is taken, but... <laughs> no, no, I'll add some more words. I'm fine. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sure Ryan's good you, with you it. You can add words to the movie. It's fine. Got it. Well, my number nine is kind of similar to yours. Really? In that... He was the other player. Yeah, no, <laughs> I wasn't. Uh, in that it, it it's a story-based game, and it, it was played in a shorter period of time mm -hmm. than you would normally play that kind of a game. Uh, but for me, uh, it was uh, playing... Jaws of the Lion, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, uh, one game a day through its completion. Mm. Uh, now, wow. can I guess if this happened year in a year, let's say 2020? Yes. That would make ah, sense. Absolutely. That would make yeah, sense, it, it, yes. The, 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 uh, pretty much the only upside, I guess, yeah. through that period of time was a lot of just spare time. And mm -hmm. uh, at, at the time, my assistant um, was living with us. And uh, when we were, uh, in fact, I, we, we were together when this all started happening, if you remember. Or no, maybe, I'm trying to remember, were you at... Um, uh, Gamma? I Gamma? was not. Yeah. I was not uh, at the outbreak of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was Before at I Gamma. Mm -hmm. I was with, at Gamma when this all started. And at the time, my assistant was living with me because he was having some difficulties. And uh, he called me up. And said, "Hey, my girlfriend, who's traveling with the show Frozen, mm. uh, the, the traveling show, um, uh, she lives in Hawaii normally. Uh, would it be okay if she stayed with us? Uh, you know, while the pandemic blew over?" <laughs> I said, "Sure." Blows over. Two and a half years mm. later, <laughs> she was still living with us. But during that period of time, my wife, myself, my assistant, and his girlfriend. Uh, at one point, we're, we're like, we got nothing going on, and, and we, Jaws of the Lion had come in, and I'm like, who's up to play Jaws of the Lion? And we got addicted to it, and every single day, for however many days, 30-some days, mm -hmm. every wow. single day, we just played the, a new chapter in Jaws of the Lion. And again, I'm sure the story became very apparent to you when you were playing Sleeping Gods right, like right, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing. The story became something that That's was cool. like... A little addictive, and like mm -hmm. we really, the story uh, was a, a much greater thing, I think, when you play it back right. to back like that than it would have been otherwise. And we didn't play any other games, it was just Jaws of the Lion. And what's funny is, uh, about a year or two later, uh, I asked, you know, I, I brought it up to my assistant, and he said, Yeah, she didn't really like Jaws of the Lion. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm wow. like, Are you serious? Well, why did she play all that time? Uh, you know, yeah. she was engaged in the story, yeah. but like the gameplay, because it was this is a person <laughs> who pretty much had played Scrabble, right? Like right, right. that was the level. Wow, okay. So to play Jaws of the Lion was she was job. like yeah, it was a little much for her, but she you know she just was was enjoying the story. So, wow, that's interesting. Uh, good on you, the story writers for uh, Jaws of the Lion, because it kept a Scrabble player playing for well over thirty days. Mm, it's kind of like binging a show versus watching yeah. it weekly or biweekly. You you don't have to kind of remember what what was happening. So. That's true right yeah right absolutely yeah uh, my number nine happened uh, in 2006 at origins so that's almost been a 20 no years ago. i don't remember anything that happened was in 2006. there a 2006 there was you know a 2006 
Uh, at the time, I was really enjoying Memoir 44. Really liked it, but uh -huh. I loved the whole Overlord scenarios. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't really play them much in Korea. I only had a few people to play with, so Origins was my chance to do this. And so I remember distinctly we played an Overlord battle um, with the new release tanks. Uh, they had these new maps that you could play on. Mm. And so there was Tigers in the Snow, which is just tons and tons of maps. Mm -hmm. So I went and found some guys and uh, play against. I asked some people to join. They played against me. I was the Overlord against another Overlord. And then Richard Borg showed up. Here, I'm going to name drop here. Yeah, the designer yeah. of the game and was like, hey, you know, do you guys, you guys care if I watch and give you tips and answer rules questions. Richard, come on in. Come on in. <laughs> come on, Richard. Come on. He's in Orlando. <laughs> uh, and he's, he'd be like, oh, the reason I did this is because of the history here. It was, just, it was a really great that'd experience. Be cool. That'd be that cool. was really fun. And it was a, that's my favorite Overlord battle, too, because I just like tanks. You're like, tanks, tanks, tanks everywhere. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that experience. I remembered it. This is one that came instantly to mind. So Memoir 44, Origins 2006, with Designer... Richard Borg. Ooh. And you know what? I lost. Okay? I lost. We need some humility on this show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me humbly introduce my number eight to <laughs> all y'all. Who'd you beat this guy, yeah, Mike? Yeah. I don't think I won this game. Maybe I won this game. I don't mm -hmm. know. So, I I did. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, I won this game. Thanks, Roy. Roy was in this game, and which is even more rare. This may be the only game I've we ever won. Finish the game, to be fair. Uh, okay. All right. I call foul. I don't know what we're talking about. Twilight Imperium Four. I, I was in this game. You were. I had just assumed that this would never be a game I would play. Okay. Right? I was I was like, it's not my type of game. I was scared off by the length. I was scared off by what I thought would be the rules complexity. That turned out to be a misguided uh, assumption uh, because it's not that complex. It is long. But I feel like I played this under the most ideal of circumstances. I was the only one of a, a group of players, which you can see right there, uh, Tom, Stephen Bonacore, Roy Candidate, and yours truly. Um, nice picture there, making us all look like we're evil and Mike's smiling <laughs> smugly. Look, I don't want to say that that ominous glow coming from Tom, uh, the beneath Tom, is uh, the result of some arcane way, ritual. We, we, I'll we, let you do, figure that out for We finished game enough that Mike won. I do remember that. It was He was going to win. And whether I'd won or lost, and this is truly the case, I just was was like thankful for this experience because it's the only way I would ever you know have chosen to play Twilight Imperium the only one that had not played it the other three were very familiar with the system were able to teach it to me in such a way that all of the hard work was being done for me basically you all were very comfortable if there are any rules questions all three of you knew the answer right and so it was kind of a ideal scenario, right? The ideal environment, it was great people to play with, people that I was familiar with and I kind of already knew how you play, how Roy plays, even how Bonacore plays. And so it was something that I was able to say, if anyone asked, have you played Twilight Imperium? I had just assumed my answer would always be no. And now I can say, yeah, I've played it once. And <laughs> I don't say he goes. Yeah, I played. I, yeah, no, I yeah, do I've won that game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I ever want to play it again. But I have a very pot, and probably the reason why is that I don't want to compete with this experience. You're right. right. Sure. So uh, being able to play Twilight Imperium with this group of people under this environment, being able to check off a bucket list thing that I probably would not have even tried to otherwise, is my number eight. And 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 that is one of my favorite games as well. Is it? Yeah, that's that's in my top five okay. games of all time. Yeah. Yeah. I just assumed yeah. I'd never play it. That's so touching, Mike. Well, look. one tear almost came out my eye. Mm -hmm. My number eight is a Magic: The Gathering story, and I could have put many stories here. Uh, mm -hmm. When I taught Mike Magic: The Gathering, that was a lovely time. That was cool. Yeah. How many times did he beat you? Oh, uh, none. I'm he terrible. Sucks at it. Terrible. He's the worst <laughs> Magic: The Gathering player. I've ever had the misfortune <laughs> to teach. I played Magic the Gathering However, against somebody that could not read the language on the cards, and they crushed me. <laughs> I'm wow. making that up. I like that, though. <laughs> That's, That's a good, good story. Though. Anyway, no, my Magic the Gathering story, I was in college, and I have for a long time 
dabbled in Magic the Gathering. I am not a Magic the Gathering player. Certainly not according to the guy I played against, okay? Because <laughs> this was a guy who happened to have some decks and he wanted to play. And I was like hanging out in the green room before a rehearsal or something and I'm like, yeah, all right. He wasn't even in the theater department. He might have been taking an elective. So you never or something. saw him again. No, no, no. Yeah, who know, was that I guy? I know who it is. It's someone Just that like is still in, in, hey, in yeah. Miami. I know because I what it's someone I happen to see at like the game store, cool stuff, like a year ago, and I'm like, hey, it's that guy. It's Lionel um, Messi. Um Yeah. <laughs> and um anyway, he goes, Okay, you wanna play? He was a really meek guy too. I'm like, Yeah, all right, cool, yeah, give me what deck do you want? I'm like, I don't I don't know, whatever mm -hmm. you don't want. Give me one of the two. Shuffle up, he has one, and immediately, like as soon as the game started, this guy transformed. <laughs> He was so serious, everything was on the line, he made sure to not just crush me as quickly as possible, but cackle gleefully wow. every chance he got. Like, this guy is the single sole reason for why I will never do a tournament of Magic the Gathering wow. or probably any other trading this card. It's not a heartwarming story. No, no. not at all. I needed a record scratch over there because I thought this was going somewhere yeah. positive. No, me no, too. No, did he play no, no, Cheaty no. Face on you? Hey, he did not play <laughs> Cheaty Face. <laughs> this was not not a good experience. Um, again, it just made me, it reminded me, and to this day reminds me, don't forget, buddy, you like magic, you right. don't want that scene. You know what I mean? And anytime I think of... Well, maybe I could go to a Friday night magic and mm -hmm. just see what's happening. That story comes up in my mind and sort of grabs me by the neck and goes, No, you idiot. Don't do that again. The thing is, I have almost an identical... There was a guy in Korea, a real meek guy, who was like, Please play magic. Please play magic. I was like, yeah. Fine. Sure, he sat I'll down and he was like... Rap! Like, and then as soon as the game was over, went back to being meek and mild again. And I was like, Also, we're never doing that again. Mm, yes. I, I don't I, know I what mean, it I had, is. I had, it was 20 to 0... <laughs> You know, life. I yeah, it's just like this was zero. Cards. This was right. negative fun, pal. Absolutely. Like, good job. I'll never play with you again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, not a not a real positive story. Um, but that's my but magic gathering story. It definitely mm -hmm. it's it's up here. Richard Garfield, come on in. <laughs> How long can I do that? Yeah, that guy was Richard yeah. Garfield. All right. So so my. Uh, <laughs> My number uh, eight is is uh, the complete opposite <laughs> from that. Um, <clears throat> this is playing with my six year old son, who crushed him. Who crushed me? <laughs> never played with crushed me in Magic the Gathering. I played him in Lisboa. Was, was, no, no, this is this is the uh, so uh, uh, so my this is a few years back. My son son six years old. And uh, up to this point, we'd always just played, we played Sleeping Queens, and we had played mostly little, you know, uh, Candyland, God help me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that's, that's a choice you made. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know, but he, well, yeah. Uh, but a lot of games that I just, uh, it's not that I dislike him, I just don't <laughs> love him. Right. Right, right. No, but it's not that I dislike, <laughs> some of the games are okay, but a lot of the games, if those of you who have children yeah, yeah. know that a lot of children's games can be pain to get through sometimes. They can be. If only there was can, a list of 12. If only there were a list, a list of, of, of good games. I know. Uh, but uh, he wasn't <laughs> gravitating toward those. Right, so right, just right, say right. that. The games that he really latched onto were not ones that I necessarily enjoyed. Mm -hmm. However, he was watching me and a friend play Zombicide Black Plague. Ah. And was like, I want to play Zombicide Black Plague with you, Daddy. And you're like, first we're going to marathon The Walking Dead? <laughs> no, yeah, well, and he had a fear of zombies. That was like oh, another wow. thing. Like, he, zombies was a thing he was scared of. So I was really surprised. Yeah. And so after my friend left, I set up the thing. And they happened to have a troll that you could play in Zombicide Black Plague that regenerates. Oh, okay. So every turn he, he heals. And he's very difficult to kill. And my son was kind of into, like, big, you know, mm -hmm. smacking things with the, you know, uh, those kind of creatures. And, and he took to that troll. And we played <laughs> Zombicide, yeah, we played Zombicide uh, Black Plague with my six-year-old son, and it became his favorite game. And he started wow. to want to play Zombicide Black Plague all the time. 
which I could totally get behind. Yeah. It was something that I really enjoyed. It was the first time that my son gravitated to a game that I really enjoyed. Yeah. And, and the, the, so the experience was, 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 you know, a much different one playing with him. Had yeah. you, had you uh, played many cooperative games before, with him before? Because that's also a great yeah, thing, too. Yeah, I think yeah. we you know. played maybe a couple, but again, they were, they were like... Um, there's like a game with a fox. Like there, there were Out games fox that were just things like that, very maybe. simple, yeah. simple little games. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this was like it was it was meatier and yeah. and he really got into it. Like he really enjoyed it. It wasn't awesome. like him pretending to enjoy it for yeah, me or yeah. me pretending to enjoy it for him. It was a mutual, like really enjoyable gaming experience that I have with my son uh, at six, uh, and that was that was that was really special. Like no, I remember that. Uh, so, all right, my number eight. Z was there. Mm -hmm. I remember. And Eric Summer was there. <clears throat> and oh, Hunter no and his wife were there. And there was a lot of people involved. This was, I think, 2018 or 2019. I'm not sure. Uh, but we played in a mega game at Dice Tower Con. Oh, I forgot about this. This Z's was great. first and last mega game, probably. Yes, uh, but memorable. Not like good, like I enjoyed it. <laughs> I also would never do it again. Yeah. Kind of like a yeah, TI4 yeah. experience. Right, right, right. So if you never played in the yes. mega games, they're worth trying once. They're, they're usually eight hours. We played once. In, we played in a truncated four hour game. Ooh. Now, this, this, these pictures <laughs> make it look more boring than it is, actually. But what happens is you're on teams of people, mm -hmm. and then each team is split. Into like one person on that team does one thing. Like Z, you were like the treasurer or something, and you went and played some poker games or whatever for money, right? That's right. Yes, I had the the budget basically, and I was the general of my team, so I would go play a war game. But everything I'd be like, I need money, so my person who's playing in Z's game has to get me money, and then I would conquer lands, which then provided money for another game under spies. But the way these mega games are, they have a whole team of referees, and really, they have a very loose set of rules. And you can do anything. You could be like, hey, I'd like to uh, try to assassinate one of these guys or whatever. So I, w I was like, hey, there's aliens coming. We were all like different groups of people trying to stop aliens. So I started spreading rumors mm -hmm. about Z's team that they were actually in cahoots with the aliens. I or, love it. No, 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 I'm sorry, about Eric Summer's team. Even better. Right. And then I would call Eric Summer over because like, it's like real time. We're like, oh, I don't know who's spreading these rumors about you, but I will find out. I'm like lying straight to his face. Meanwhile, Z's team was working with aliens, right? <laughs> we were, that's right. Something like that. I yeah. started a fake rumor. Yeah, that we were. I mean, our team was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> like, the heat is off of yeah, us. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but great. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is really gears within gears in a very interesting way. It's sort mm -hmm. of games that all link up to this big umbrella. It's it's And it's you a don't even need thing. to know everything. Yeah. You don't. You, you, you don't. The, the referees do a good job, Brian. They'll explain to you the basic rules of your game. You're playing that game, but you could like just stand up and go over and be like, hey, come over here and talk. It's like a huge game of diplomacy, but you can pull a referee aside and say, this is what we want to do, and they'll make some judgment call and say, you got to roll some dice or this or this will happen. They'll try yeah. to make it work. And I love it. It was really just interesting. Hard to get going. Well, you needed like, I mean, you uh, needed like 30 people to play. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Yeah, I, what I would like to do is I'd like if someone was like in Miami, they're like, we're doing a mega game on Saturday. I'd be like, okay, who wants to go? I'd get some people and go and do it. Yeah. But to do it at a con, you feel like, oh, I'm wasting all this time at a con. Yeah. Four hours wasn't bad, and I would do that again if I could. Uh, but it is also a lot of work for these guys to put it together and everything. Sure. I saw Revolutionary War one one time, which I there's a video on the channel about it. Just a lot of fun because, you know, some people are the colonies and they're also trying to decide if they want to even do independence or mm -hmm. some colonies might be like, you know what, we're sticking with England. Right. You know, you can do anything. It's neat. So, very cool. Th that yeah. is uh, the mega game at Dice Tower Con. All right, my number seven was part of a live play that you can actually watch on the channel. And um, this is one where I absolutely did not win, unfortunately. But uh, it was a great experience. Another game that has been a classic game 
right, that I thought I will likely not play because it's not, again, my type of game. I was a same, very similar situation to TI4, and that is Cosmic Encounter, which has oh. been uh, in your favorite games, you know, for, for years. You know these aliens, right? You, and again, being the, the good situation in the sense that, A, I had a good time, but B, you know this game like the back of your hand, right? So there were no rules, ambiguities in a game that is rife with them. That is correct. Right. Um, and, and so it was just, again, I felt like I was in the best possible position to have a good time. There's, there's it was, I guess, during a spring I spectacular. I very much remember this game. Yes. Um, and I very much did win. I lied. I crushed it! I was looking at the picture. I was like, "You won." I did win, and and that I way, won. Wait, is this really like a subtle way to make a list <laughs> of ten times you crushed it? I look, or, or is this the list of the ten games he won? <laughs> Two games. Yeah, that's, right. that's, that's, that's <laughs> he more really like it. Remembers games he won. Uh, yeah, that's that's, that's more what like makes it, it memorable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I crushed. Yeah. No, so I remember. <laughs> it's almost unfortunate that I won these games because it's absolutely no, not the yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. sad. Yeah. But <laughs> I do. I just remember that I chose. I chose an alien. Tom was kind of like I had a few to choose from and Tom's like well this one is interesting because it does this this one is it so you gave me all this background and I picked the one that was like the least likely to win right you were telling me like look and and I don't know I felt like I kind of lucked into it but it was fun it was a great experience um, and also wasn't it like controversial to some extent like we weren't sure if I was playing the power right or something weird like that. You I don't just know. said the man has made no mistake in Cosmic since the late 70s, and no. now you're saying that <laughs> he, it might have been controversial? He had, no, he had he ended up having the right interpretation, but there were other people at the table who were like, I'm not so sure about this. Did they win? Uh, no. No, they You lost. won. I What's won. it matter what they think? If you lost a Cosmic Encounter, you don't matter. That's correct. That's anyway. Correct. Yeah, so check out this video and, and, you'll, and you'll see. <laughs> Notice who wasn't at that table. Z Garcia. Yeah, wouldn't be caught dead playing with you. Again, <laughs> it's on my memorable experiences, i.e. Z Garcia was not at the table. <laughs> That's my number seven. My number seven you was. Have to say I missed the cosmic um, encounter. <laughs> my number seven makes the list because it, it took me to a place that was so far away from Mike Delisio <laughs> that it it really was pleasant. It was far away enough. I had to go all the way to Iceland. Yes. Oh, I oh. need to get Iceland on your list somewhere. Oh, no, this is uh we played Arkham Horror uh, the card game. One of the guys there said, "Hey, do you want to do when we come when you come over? We're gonna do one of these like mega games, mm. the Labyrinths of Lunacy." In which you play multiple tables play and they kind of link each other and like you know if I'm playing over here and there's a team over there we can pass things from this game to that game information and whatever and it was just memorable is this thing that I would never find the time or the, the the number of people to do it's very complex it's really in depth and I was kind of dreading it saying mm. I said yeah let's do it <laughs> but to be f honest I was kind of dreading Jumping into this big thing. Yeah. What if everybody like? What if the people playing are really taking it very seriously? Right. Exactly. You know what I mean. And it turned out to be a lovely time. I don't know if we did everything right. I don't care. <laughs> everybody playing was lovely. It was one of those experiences where I went afterwards. I'm like, you know, I'm not really gonna remember this game that much, but everybody playing made this a wonderful time. They were jovial. They were being silly. People there were lighthearted. We were having a good time laughing about the story and the things we were discovering. And it lasted a long time. This was several hours. Mm. And I just loved it. So for me, number seven was playing one of these mega games of, of uh, Arkham Horror LCG at that... Um, What's the what's the convention called? Uh, Valhalla. Valhalla. Yeah, Valhalla. Valhalla. Valhalla yeah. Yeah. He's I about the name drop. He's like, I've no, also been to this con. I, we were just there. Yeah. So. <clears throat> it's also yeah. amazing because all the people were speaking strictly Icelandic, mm -hmm. and the cards were all in Icelandic. Correct. So. And I crushed it. <laughs> 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 so my number seven, Iceland. Uh, Iceland, is not. No, it's not in Iceland. It's almost the flip side of of my number eight. Uh, this is... You're playing with your grandfather. <laughs> no. Uh, close. Your One dad. Minute. Yes. This is the first that time I remember uh, ever playing a non-mass market game. 
Okay. Uh, so, so my dad, who I'm, I'm, I was unfortunately very close to, um, and he gave me my first D and D books, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and he, and I only realized this when I was making up this list that he introduced me to my first non mass mm. market. Oh board wow! Game. And my dad was an like he was an amazing game player. He was a. Uh, chess champion, a chess master. Wow. Uh, when he was uh, in the uh, Air Force, I think he mm. he and a team won the French Open. Like wow. he was like really knew his stuff, but he was into those old um, <clears throat> games with the little chits and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, he he belonged to one of those folks that sent him one every month. Yeah, yeah. Remember back in the seventies yeah, when yeah. we had that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I don't remember it, but, but I've yeah, heard it. yeah. And so Mike there remembers. was this game from 1977. It was War of the Ring, and uh, it was Lord of the Rings, and oh, wow. it was uh, there. It had all kinds of different scenarios. You could play like the the. They had war scenarios were full on like armies and stuff. All these little chits, but they had one scenario in it which was. Basically, one side would play the the bad guys, mm -hmm. the the the, the Nazgul's, mm -hmm. trying to stop uh, Frodo and his party from making it to the crack of doom to throw the ring in, and that is the version that we played. And I would always play Frodo, wow. and he would always play the bad guys. Now, we were talking about did you win? I honestly don't know if we ever finished a game. Ah, wow! Because it was a very long game, and mm. I do not remember. I, I, I was. Racking my brain. I don't think we ever finished one of these, which wow. means that my dad, over and over again, yeah. started this game knowing that I would not finish it. Because I was like <laughs> seven, eight, yeah, yeah. nine years old. You're I not mean, have not that tops. Span. I think it was four, seven or eight. So, but I loved playing. It was up in his office, and we would just sit in there for hours, talk about a bunch of stuff, mm. and play this game. And I have searched. Any of you out there, <laughs> I have searched everywhere to try and find a copy of this game. Wow. Uh, to to that was in a decent condition. I found one that was just so beat up. Right. But it's just for like uh, uh, warm fuzzies. I would love to hold this in my hand, uh, in and revisit those memories yeah, again. Yeah. Right. But yeah, just first first time I ever in uh, found out there were things outside of Monopoly. Yeah. Uh, I really like that depiction of Sauron. Yeah, it's a beautiful box, huh? That's the Baron. That's and what, what company is that? Wrong. It's SPI. Oh, SPI. That's that's, that's, that was the company. Yeah, SPI. They made. They also made another game that we played. Uh, we played um, Starship Troopers. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they had a Starship Troopers game of this. Got it. That font yeah. is oh so nostalgic. Gosh. It really yeah. is. It's the you Atari know what I mean? font too. Yeah, there's yeah. A, something about just that font yeah. is very nostalgic. That font yep. makes me think yeah. it's a paperback book to read. That's it's true right. too. It but it has the same, like, like you mm -hmm. said, the yeah. Starship Troopers and all those things. Is that? I don't know, it's just that font. And the yeah. map, I took that map later when I was in my early teens. I took that map and I, I put it into poster board and I had it on my wall for years. That's nice, uh, yeah. Wow. Because I was a nerd. Mm. I was a giant nerd. All right, my number seven is um, happened on the cruise ship one night. And look, I during 2020, 2021, I played a lot of Werewolf. <laughs> but one night we decided to play it. Was it One Night Ultimate Werewolf? No, it was just One Night. Just it, one no, night? not One Night Werewolf. It was just <laughs> Werewolf. Okay. But they played one but night. But one night. They played one night. We had an ultimate game of Werewolf <laughs> on the ship. So here's the thing about cruise ships. If you've ever been on them, during the day, cruise ships, they're either at port or they're going to the next destination, but they go at a fairly leisurely place. They mm -hmm. do so on purpose. At night, they book it mm -hmm. because you're sleeping and they're just right. going. So we were playing on a, on a part of a ship and it was fairly dimly lit. <laughs> We were rushing through the water, and you could hear like faint party music in the background. <laughs> I don't know why that works. Like yeah, faint yeah. music in the background yeah. is always creepy for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. It was such a great experience. Yeah, people sitting there wow. playing werewolf. A card. Once someone dropped it, it flies off. You're like, don't want to go off the ship. <laughs> now I would play with like the coins, the coins or something. You know, yeah, that you can't yes. can't lose. But yeah, if you lose the card, you're going overboard. That's correct. I did not say that. Maybe I did. I don't remember. <laughs> right? I mean, that's but, uh, the way to play. I just remember that being such an epic place to play werewolf. That's pretty mm, cool. Yeah. It is, and yeah. I tried to replicate it, and that it just that I don't know that, why that one section wasn't lit very well. Yeah. But it Again, worked I think so it's well. Hard. A lot of these experiences, that's I really do point. think. Yeah. Did, you, did you have Eric narrate it? No, 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 no. We don't narrate. Right? I was the. I was the. It wasn't one night. It was just werewolf. 
Oh, just werewolf. No, we played I, okay. one, one night. night. Mm -hmm. And it was an ultimate experience for you. Yes. But other than that. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So anyway, werewolf on the cruise ship. <laughs> All right. My number six is um, a, a game that I was teaching. I was like, okay. And this was with uh, my wife and some friends uh, that were relatively new to hobby games. I was still kind of, well, not rel uh, not yeah, anyway. <laughs> this game was one I was very excited to teach. I had played it a couple of times. I really liked it. I thought that this group was going to really like it. It was the game is Kemet, right? This was the, not Blood and Sand, the original Kemet. Yeah. And I was like, so I I read up. I, I was like, okay, I've played this a number of times, but I want to make sure I've got this teach down, right? I was like so nervous to teach this game. All right, it's now become what I call Kemet Epic Mode because while I was teaching the game, the idea of temporary victory points completely left my mind. Like this game did not include. Temporary victory points. Do you have any idea how long this game lasted? <laughs> four hours? It was a four-hour game of Kemet. The fact that they weren't miserable, and the fact that I realized about ten minutes before the game ended that, oh, bleep. <laughs> For historical accuracy. Temporary victory points. I'm like, because I was thinking, I'm like, why is this game taking so long? Right? Because Kemet's a pretty snappy game. By design, right? Wow. And so, yeah, we were playing to 10 points, but none of them were temporary victory points. So the only way you were getting victory points the was... Permanent victory points. By winning a battle. Winning a battle, and I think by taking over somebody's... No, taking over somebody's that's temporary. temporary. I don't remember. All I know is I remember it was really long, and I felt... Winning a battle, probably. Really yeah. stupid at the end of it, because I was like... Hey, I've kind of ruined this whole thing. This is my I do have a question. No, I do so have far. a question. Uh -huh. Did you win? No, yeah. I did not win. I wasn't even in the... I, I was probably last place. This is a great story. I need more of these. But yeah, I, it, <laughs> I was so... I just felt so bad because you want a game that you want to introduce to people. Did, did right? they enjoy it, though? You said they, they had miserable. a good time. No, they I had a... Been, they yeah. had, but, but I felt bad because I was like, you always want to make the, the best experience you can if it's a game you like and you want to turn other people onto that game. That's really like a scary proposition. Any game I yes. really love and I want right. to teach, I will definitely slide in there like, ah, yeah, let me teach you this game. It's all right. Like, right. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You do not go in there like, Woo, yeah, get yeah, ready yeah. to have your minds blown. We actually have learned this here at the studio. Whenever we love a game, we're we, like, yeah, I think I, you should try this out. You might find it interesting. I downplay it like crazy. You yeah, have yeah. to. You like, Again, it, it, yeah, it's just safer. It's a safer proposition to mm -hmm. treat it that way. Looking at the rest of his list, maybe they really enjoyed it because it was the first game he didn't win. That could be. That could be also, yeah. yeah. They're like, yeah. we don't yeah. care how long it takes. Yeah. You got crushed. <laughs> you got crushed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but number six yeah. is Kemet Epic Mode. Mine, number six, is a game campaign uh, that I played with Tom, and I don't know who else was in it. Who cares? Tom was in it. Uh, this is when we played Pandemic Legacy. Which one? The first one. Hmm. Because it's that first one. You know what I mean? Not to say it's the best one. It might be. I thought they were all good. Um... And my estimation of them has sort of gone up and down in comparison to each other, I mean. But the first one is the one that was kind of mind-blowing, you know? It was. Because you played, like, Risk Legacy a little bit, and you're mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, this is cool, yeah, it changes, ooh, wow. But then you, and I already was a huge Pandemic fan at this point. And then what? Pandemic Legacy comes around, <laughs> right, I know. Um, and you play January and whatever, it's basically kind of Pandemic-y, uh, with a little twist, maybe, and then... Stuff starts to change, and it starts to tell you a story with permanence, with differences from one game to the next. You know how mm -hmm. legacy works, but you probably yourself have forgotten the impact of that, the the sort of mind-blowing nature of that. That happens, you become desensitized to something like this. Mm -hmm. But that first time through... I was so excited, because we played in the morning <clears throat> each day. Jason would drive down from Lauderdale... Okay, I really, was, I really wish you would have not reminded me who was in it. I said you, and that was it. But no, now I know Jason was in it. This is my number eight. Mm. 
lot. Wow, it only a two point wow. drop. This is, two points. this is two with Jason <laughs> on yeah. his list so far. Right. So Jason would drive down, and, but I was just like, all right, what's what are we gonna find out today? Mm -hmm. What what new thing is gonna happen? Yeah. We would play. We played two games uh, in a row, and then we would you know that we play the next time whenever it was. It was great. I mm. loved it. Yeah, it was fantastic. So my number six. Well, my number six uh, is is the perfect example of your first experience at a game really changing your perspective on the game. Mm. You can have a fantastic game, but if your first game experience with it is miserable, you almost never like that game mm -hmm. after that. And you can have a game that's okay, and you play it, but it's just amazing. And that, that for me, was the first time I ever played Dead of Winter. Uh -huh. uh, the mm -hmm. first time I ever played Dead of Winter, it was with, you know, talking about the right group of people, yeah. it was right, and I was, you know, the hidden bad guy. <laughs> And my whole thing was, I believe I was a mad scientist trying to create his own army, the undead, and you know, control their minds and everything, and make that this. That sounds reasonable. Evil. Mm -hmm. For, I, I felt the same way. Completely reasonable. Uh, I could get behind it. I love playing the hidden bad guy. Mm, you like I the love traitor. being the hidden traitor in mm -hmm. those games. Uh, and I, I got that, and I just played it. Uh, like just, <laughs> I. I remember you that, it. that, that is that we, is <laughs> the term I delisioed the game. I delisioed the game because I, and I remember real one of my best friends at the time knew I was the I was the hidden traitor <laughs> and was like just it was that it was like that moment in like uh, the original uh, invade, uh, uh, Invader of the Body Snatchers mm -hmm. where he's out there and he's like they're pod people there <laughs> and he's just like he's the, don't Ooh. don't listen to him what is wrong with you You're right he's he's obviously <laughs> he's gonna kill us all and they booted him right out of wow. the co they colony exiled him That's exiled great. him to go die in the snow and I was just and I that moment of like at the end when I won. And I had that army. It was just, and You're I don't normally, I don't normally like playing the villain. Yeah. But in these hidden traitor games, yeah. when you pull that off, <laughs> I have seen no evidence of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 when you pull that off, it just feels amazing. Mm -hmm. And Dead of Winter was like went to like the top of my list for the longest time. Right. Just from that like experience of pulling off the perfect, uh, you know, hidden yeah. traitor, and uh, that, that's my number six. Nice. All right, my number six. Let me show up my face here. Okay, I'm sorry and apologize that my number six is <laughs> not on our channel. So we had said a couple years ago we were going to do some Gloomhaven playthroughs. Yeah. Um, and the logistics and stuff were not there to be able to do these live. Mm -hmm. I started playing them with Stephen Bonacore, the the pod father of gaming, at what he calls himself. So it's a <laughs> fake lie. And and uh, Rod Phelps, the Rod, the Rod Father, Father of Gaming. Of gaming. Rod that's Father. a real legitimate uh, name. That's correct. I've seen the man's birth certificate. Mm. So we started playing through this together, and I, I, like I said, it just was not good quality. The, there was a lot of problems, but the game was so much fun. Did you mention that this was the app, right? You this were, is the app. Yeah, right? yeah. This is us playing the. So not a real board game experience. Ah, whatever. <laughs> this, this, we were playing it through Steam. This is a nice top nine. I mean, I like it. Hey, number five is Diablo Four for me. So is that? Right. Is that there we not go. Whatever. There we go. And it was just—it's really funny because Stephen is like a snappy, quick person. Mm -hmm. Not in his game. We'd be like, okay, I'm done. My card's ready. My card's ready. We sit there and wait. And he's like, hang on, guys. I'm picking. I'm picking. And then invariably, his character died halfway through every scenario. Did every scenario, his character died. During all of these long pauses Sounds of great. Steven doing things, did you hear the sound of ice's cl ice clinking in glasses? Because there, there could be other <laughs> no, I, explanations. I could, I could see him. It wasn't like he was disappearing off screen. Did the, did the image freeze for uh, periods of time while you heard the sound of ice in glasses? <laughs> clinking. Clinking. And I just want to make this... And the pouring. I just want to make this clear. Agave being grown. <laughs> Steve Bonacore dying over and over and over again. Is part of your best. Yes, you yes. Okay. but it was funny. But I mean, he would also he would like come in and just do damage to everybody. He's like, oh god, great up. Oh. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, That's I'm sitting up. there, I'm playing, and, I, and then I would probably eventually die. Mm -hmm. And Rob would be like, 
guess I gotta clean up this mess. <laughs> and he would go on to win the scenario by right, himself. Right, you that know? sounds about right. Great. It was fun. I really like that. There should be a super cut of <laughs> Bonacore dying in that <laughs> over and over again. He just had the worst. <laughs> He had, the worst luck. he had the worst luck, too. <coughs> it didn't help that Rod had this power that, like, hits everyone around him. Mm -hmm. And Bonacore would run up in the middle of the enemies. <laughs> then Rod would come up and hit everyone, including, including Bonacore. <laughs> you got in my way. You're a dummy. <laughs> Wizard needs like, food. Well, it's, it's, it's for the good of the party. You know? mm -hmm. so, oh, my gosh. I love it. <laughs> uh, it's a good time. At some point, we are going to play this here in the studio. We'll, we'll try to do it live. But, it, again, it's a, because of the amount of computers power this thing requires mm. it's, a, it's a tricky thing and we were doing it remote which was even harder if we did it sure. in person we might be able to pull it off yeah okay so that's gloomhaven with Bo the podfather and rodfather <laughs> It melted. Yes. My number five is almost a crossover with Z, but it was a better experience because... Uh, it's higher up? Huh? Because it's higher up on your list? No, no. Because it's a different version of Pandemic Legacy. <laughs> um, I had never Zip, played zero, right? the original Pandemic Legacy. I had not played Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Not because I wasn't interested. I never got a group together that were willing to take the time and effort to do it. But when Pandemic Legacy Season Zero came in, the three of us played it. Uh, you, myself, uh, and, and Tom, and, um, and Roy. Uh, <laughs> the three wow. of us. The three of us <laughs> well, look, and Roy, Roy. I said that Joey's <laughs> always implied, so is Roy. Also, I, I, I'm sorry, Roy. Um, <laughs> we were like crazy. Like, yeah, actually, really actually that's right. This is even more memorable because, yes, it was a great experience. I had a really fun time. I got to learn kind of what Pandemic Legacy is about. Also, I figured out that early on, Roy and I were going to be the beating heart of this team. Because Tom was going to go find some little thing he liked to do, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go off in this building for about uh, 24 turns while you actually <laughs> that do is 100 things accurate. That, that win the game. <laughs> Z was there, too. And so we had a really Z good time. He was driving the van. <laughs> he was doing the van stuff. You weren't driving the van. Yeah. Yeah. I shuffled the cards in the van. That's true. But I will say, joking aside, we did really good, did really good at finding our roles early on, and we stuck to those, right? We kind of knew what our roles and responsibilities were, and I think we all did our best at them, you know what I mean? And, and, and so it was neat that I got to finally find out what the fuss was about. Even if it's not the best of the three, I can't say whether it is or it isn't, but I had a really good time, uh, again, playing with people that I already knew kind of how they played games. That also is good in a cooperative game. You know what I mean? Like, I know what the type of player you tend to be. I know the type of player you tend to be. And uh, who else was there? Oh, Roy! <laughs> oh, I know the, yeah, that's right. He was there. I know the type of person that Roy tends to be. Yeah, and, and so actually, yeah, we were both being, you know, we, we, we were... Roy and I were commiserating of like, yeah, we're the ones that know how to cooperate. Anyway, season zero. Uh, we, all right. It's true, don't even play. Garbage. <laughs> no, no, I was helping out in a different way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were playing an app at the time. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> yes. All right, that's all my right. number five. My number five is this good book I read once. <laughs> 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 oh. no, no. My number five is a, uh, is a tale of horror, actually. Ooh. This involves me uh, playing a game at our sadly gone local game store with Sam Healy, and I was playing Condottiere, oh. which is this card-driven area control game, mm -hmm. which is the version I put up on the screen right there, one I found a long time ago, and it's kind of hard to get. Now, this printing of it, the game is, has been printed many times. It's a very interesting game. It's As a, we are playing... It's a very light game. It's a very light game. Yeah, it's a pretty light game. Okay. Yeah. Um, that doesn't really matter for the story, <laughs> but yes, it is a light game. I'm playing this card-driven game, and near the end of the game, I th actually, I think when we're cleaning up the game, Sam drops a card onto the floor. And to pick up this card, which fell onto the floor, it's under him, so he, like, grabs his chair and kind of, like, bounces himself back 
to grab the card. I love the story and I don't even know where it's going yet. <laughs> and he lands the foot of the chair right in the middle of the card. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it took everything in my power. Can you hug him? It just oh. again. This no is a, Z too. This is an out of print game oh. in basically pristine condition oh. that now has the indentation of one of those square <laughs> legs in the middle and bend lines. Bend lines radiating from that. <laughs> And you know the only choice at that point is to have him do that with all the rest of the cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One at a time, you just have to put that same mark yeah, in it's every like, place. Yeah, like okay, I need yeah. you for about uh, 2 hours. Don't <laughs> yeah, go anywhere. Yeah. Here we He's go. Pretty yeah. meticulous in his I am very game careful and meticulous yeah, and uh oh, oh, man. it just again, it was one of those things where I'm like He's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, I'll replace it for you." I'm like, "It's okay. You you can't." <laughs> it's not available. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's like, I like how he doesn't okay. stop with it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You can't. It's unavailable. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, no, I definitely was like going that line of like. <sighs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, hard. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Right. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's that, like, oh my gosh, this right. thing is marked. It's wrecked. It was just painful. It's it that, is like, painful. you know, um,. But yeah, what do you do at that point? It's like, you, yeah, yeah, I would love to replace and, it, but you actually can't replace store. it. Right. So um, there you go. That's memorable. Do you still have that copy of the I game? I do still have it. Yes. Can you please bring it in so I can see it? Sure. Okay. I need uh, picks. You and I have very different ideas. of. of uh, you went a very darker route with the memorable. <laughs> well, a couple of <laughs> them I are did. a little darker, uh, but it's yeah, memorable. I certainly uh, remember it. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't have forgotten that, that's for sure. Uh, uh, so... Uh, oh wait! Before you go, actually, yeah. somebody says opaque card sleeves. They're weird sized cards. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're not like normal skinny card. and tall, so yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, it just gets worse and worse. Oh man! Uh, yeah, you have to. You have to bring a, a, at least. Wait, put you a still had this game? Over. I do. <laughs> I do. It's a good game. Oh my god! It's a nice printing of it too. The, the artwork. Shiny. The artwork in this game is like that woodcut mm. look. <laughs> And it's actually woodcut. Look at your oh. shiny fantasy flight version. Where is it? I don't see it. I think that one's dollar. out of print now, actually. Oh, that was out of print too? I think so. They're all anyway, like... go ahead. Uh, so my number five is actually, uh, I, I had to kind of, uh, it's actually three different gaming experiences that I kind of put into one because I, I didn't want to like, choose of uh, one of my children, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, it's one of those kind of things. But it's hard many, to differentiate. How many each yeah. one, each one, I only have one, but th th this, is, this is this is as if all this is a, you, I'll, if, I'll explain and then you'll Some understand. Analogy. It's very hard. These are three very different experiences that are part of a single experience in a, in a way. Uh, we do something on our channel called Extreme and you mentioned it at the top, called Extreme Board Gaming, uh, which was a joke that we started in the writer's room years and years ago of like, we're going to do the Extreme board gaming where you're like you know diving out of a plane while trying to play a, a board game well we decided to actually do that when we came back uh, and started doing this for the internet and uh, I didn't jump out of a plane because uh, they took one look at me and went oh no you're not jumping out of a plane uh, I was too big mm. to jump out of a plane oh yes, yes. but uh, I did the next three experiences, which are not out on on the uh, on the uh, interwebs yet, on the channel. But it was uh, playing too many bones uh, underwater with sharks. <laughs> uh, it was then playing Ono Volcano on a live volcano. Uh, and ice cool on a glacier, mm. uh, and we just shot those uh, pretty much in a two month period, um, and uh, there, there's me uh, with sharks, <laughs> uh, and it wasn't just a few sharks, there were literally sharks everywhere, this is in uh, the Bahamas, uh, and I trained for two months to do that, uh, it was the most work that I've ever gone through, I had to get Scuba certified. I had to lose fifty pounds to be able to do it wow. uh, and and get in. Did you survive? Uh, no, I died oh, unfortunately right shame. after that picture was taken. That's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, um, but uh, uh, but they were all amazing experiences. Uh, uh, this one in particular, but the other two again, they were different experiences, I guess. And each one of them, while it's happening, 
it was always a sense of uh, I did this one uh, with uh, that was with our sound guy mm -hmm. Kurt uh, was my partner in that, and the other two were with uh, my partner on the show, Leif Gantford. Uh, but in both all these experiences, were one of those moments where we just looked at each other and went. Can you believe we're doing this right now? Like this is such a surreal experience. Uh huh. Um, I, the the shark thing, we were doing it a uh, hundred miles away from a uh, Cat Five hurricane, so that was a really interesting experience mm. above the water. Uh, below the water was 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 a little easier, uh, and and the other two experiences again we we're on a on top of a lava flow <laughs> that had cooled. Um, uh, and you could see the smoke and everything still coming mm. from uh, you know, on an active live volcano mm. while it was happening. Uh, and, and the other was one of the, I think it was the third largest glacier on Earth. Uh, so those were... Everyone remember these stories later on when we're doing an in-memoriam for Dragon Exactly. Earth, right? Well, that's, that's what they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. time he tried to play yeah. a forest fire game in yeah. the middle of a forest, middle forest, forest fire. fire. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to play Thunder Road Vendetta I, while jumping should, over the... I yeah. should say, and, and we do say these in the videos, we have a very large safety crew. We have a, a, uh, a safety coordinator and a stunt supervisor when we do these things. So we don't just go out there and do this, this mm -hmm. stuff. So we... we uh, we, are, we do it as safely as you can do some of these very dangerous things. Mm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. All right, my number five is memorable because I just won't ever forget it. Uh, it That's was what the that first. Means. It was the first, and this is in uh, 2013, actually, 10 years ago. The first 24-hour marathon. Oh, wow. Oh, I, wow. I mean, we've had a lot of good, you know, we've, had, we've done a marathon almost every year since then. In some years, we've done two. Um, but this was the first and only one of two where we did 24 hours straight. Yes. In fact, I don't know that we made 24 hours in the second one. I don't remember because what we call it because we were really tired. But this first one, which starts with that bottom picture there, <laughs> that was the opening of the 24 hour marathon. And uh, so what we did was I said, hey, I want to do a 24 hour marathon. At this point, I was the only employee of the Dice Tower. Um, so I invited over Z and Sam, and then for some stupid reason, mm -hmm. I invited the game group in general to come in. Mm. And so various people from our game group came and showed up, including the man sitting next to me who <laughs> never left. I remembered it distinctly. He came in, and we we're like, okay, each person in gaming group can be here for four hours. How is that different from now? Well, it started that is the difference. Oh, I was That's say, what it yeah. started. Okay. <laughs> Jason hasn't left here since that game. But I remember I was so. A different house. I was they so, say he's still out there playing somewhere. <laughs> 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 but I remember the first time I, I, it was at one room that has an air conditioning unit. But it was, I think it was in the, it was a cooler month of the year, hmm. in my house. And at night I'm like, we gotta be quiet because <laughs> right. the family's sleeping. Yeah. Um, we had a whole table full of snacks, and people were like, "You guys are pigs." We're like, um, "It's 24 hours. What do you want us to do? <laughs> right. Not eat." Yeah. Someone ordered us pizza. Mm, All these from Board Game Geek ordered us pizza. We played a lot of different games. It was really entertaining and fun and crazy. And when it was done, I was like, never again. Mm. <laughs> I've, done, I've done that before. You have done that a few times, yes. I yeah. think you were saying never again to, to inviting Jason, though, <laughs> if I remember correctly. But what I, I'll never forget the moment at the end. I was saying goodbye to everybody. And... Everyone was getting in the cars, and Jason was just like talking, 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 talking. And I'm like, Jason, we're 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 good, we're done. Go home, go home. And he's just like, I'm like, go home. And at that point, Z got his car, and he just stuck it out of the window and laughed and drove off. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> oh, I do remember that actually. That that stuck with me too. So the it was a, it was memorable for mm -hmm. sure. It was a big like again. 24 hours legitimately straight through. Yeah, that's rough. We don't do that anymore. Mm -mm. I'm too old to do that. I don't, yeah, I don't I I think agree. I would fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like, I, I was able to do that to my body. I don't think I could do that. Nah, that'd be rough. We, we, we do a 36, and nothing. now we're splitting. And when you guys are done at night, which is like 1 or 2 in the morning, you're wiped at that yeah. point. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then we'd be like, now there's 7 more hours. Right. <sighs> wow. So, anyhow, the 24 hours of marathon. Way to make me feel old. Ha. 
All right, my number four is uh, what a game session that was being filmed specifically for a series that we do on the channel here recently that is a pretty involved process called Game and Talk, right? And so my number four is playing Cthulhu Death May Die, the, 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 that big scenario where you've got the giant Cthulhu miniature, which is very oxymoronic, and um, uh, playing this game. This was memorable for so many reasons, right? Um, a, it was a it actually turned out to be a, a, a good kind of like yeah. close to the end finish type of a thing where we, you, you know, we weren't sure if we were going to make it or not. This one. We did not. The we did miniature not. won because he's still in there glaring the, at the us. The miniature mm -hmm. did win. But I also just remember having so much fun just kind of riffing on things right. and, and, you know, the uh, the horror of the... the, the Wait, the, why are you guys not facing Cthulhu? That seems like the worst possible well, you, That angle. definitely became well, part of it. Uh, right. Yeah, we needed him a, to be seen, right. and us to be seen. Right. So, unfortunately for me, the view was very distracting. <laughs> yeah, it was. And the, Roy painted that so well. He did. I was did. like, okay. why? Yep. He it's, missed no detail. <laughs> he did not. There was a okay. crack in the space-time continuum. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. Um, Doing this while kind of the the filming, we were doing filming in a completely different way. Uh, we were using static cameras. We, you know, Chris was moving around with a camera um, to be able to have that kind of a, a scenario, a, a an environment, but still feel connected to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Right? I still was invested in the campaign. Obviously, we're 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 performing a bit. We're trying to have fun with it, but it all just felt so. At the end of it, I was like, "Man, that was a great experience. Yeah. It was just so much fun." Um, and then seeing the final project or final product, you know, a lot of work was put into the editing of it, as they all are on these uh, th these particular series that we do. Just so much fun. So yeah. number four, Cthulhu, Death May Die, and the Crack of Doom. I love that all. I, that was great. That was my favorite one, I think, that we've done, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Board Game Animal says, so Cthulhu himself is the only being who can defeat Mike Delisio. That is true. <laughs> Understood. That is true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cthulhu cannot be Delisio. No, I tried. All right, my number four is um, a party game memory, and it is uh, Beyond Balderdash. I remember being at a friend's house. We were playing Balderdash, or Beyond Balderdash, which is the version I have, that one right there. And I... Just remember distinctly at one point doing that thing, which seems sort of like force, but it's not. If it if it sometimes happens, where you laugh so much, where you literally sort of like slowly make your way out of a chair and onto the floor, you know, <laughs> it was that and like developing a headache. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, like yeah. my head is throbbing right now, but I can't stop laughing. And it was playing this and how quickly it just sort of veered off the rails. We stopped updating the score about halfway up the tracks and the stupidity that was being written down and jokes being called back and dumb stuff like that. And I was just laughing and, and I can only imagine bright red and falling out of my chair, <laughs> holding myself, laughing. Um, it's one of those things that again, Sounds like a thing you kind of put on. Like, I fell out of my chair laughing. Yeah. But it has happened to me <laughs> once. He was R-O-F-L. Mm -hmm. I actually did that playing uh, this game. That is the wrong board. <laughs> but it is, it is the one I picked. Because um, yeah. I couldn't find the other one. Hmm. That's my number four. I... It was incredibly memorable. I was with you until you had the wrong board. Then I was completely... I, 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 know. I, yeah. I, I don't even understand how the game right. plays it, anymore. It, it threw me completely uh, out of again, my Again, I was, I was saying earlier that this is the kind of experience, this one, a few others we have, that almost make you a little gun-shy to bring that game back right. out again. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. You're like... Yeah. It's never going to live up to that. Right. I'm like, I'm afraid I'm just trying to recapture lightning in a bottle here. Right. I'm just going to kind of be disappointed. Well, or visiting a place that you... Had a magical time in. Oh my word! And being like, oh, I'm gonna go there again. Right. You're like, should I? Yeah. It's let never just, gonna be as good. Let me just know? live with this perfect memory. That happened yeah. with the Campbell Up. I, I had such a great game at the game store. It's like one of the best ever. And I was like, let's play it live. And it was it was a very good. okay game. Yeah, but, but it right. felt terrible. 
because it was such a letdown. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. Play it yeah. when. So once you have an amazing experience with the game, burn never it. Never play it again. Burn it. That's exactly. a good way to do it. Uh, my number four. Uh, so to give you a, a, a tiny bit of background here, because a lot of you don't know me very well out there. Uh, originally above board was uh, a television show for a streaming service, which legally I cannot name. Uh, uh, it didn't uh, air on that streaming service because... Freebie. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, because uh, things went awry during uh, the pandemic uh, and, and things weren't able to be finished. But... Uh, when we started making this show, uh, one of the reasons we, we made the show was I was just a big, huge fan of board games and the board gaming community, uh, and uh, a big fan of these guys, uh, and all the, the folks out there uh, that uh, do this, that, that, that are, are the influencers in, in, this, in this arena. So right at the beginning, when we started filming the show, I met a lot of these people, met a lot of my, you know, kind of heroes. And it was weird and mm. exciting to do so, as you can imagine. And uh, when I, I met at a convention and then he came into town, uh, was, uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I've gone up, uh, was Rodney Smith. Ah. Uh, was Rodney Smith. And he said, hey, you want to come over to my friend's house? Uh, and and play a game, and I'm like, yeah, I want to play a game with Rodney Smith. That sounds amazing. So he came over. The, happened to be his friend's house was Rick Summer's house, which I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rich Summer. Rich, Rich Summer. I'm sorry, Rich Summer. Eric he, Summer. Eric the Summer. More Rich Summer. Is the more famous is Rich Summer. But Rich Summer's house, uh, and uh, he left. Rich Summer didn't play. He was having a date night with his wife. Uh, so it was me and Rodney Smith and and, and another one of his friends. Uh, but. Tom he Cruise. Would, you know, <laughs> but we played Terraforming Mars. Uh, and I had never played Terraforming Mars. So I had Rodney Smith teaching me <laughs> how to play Terraforming Mars. And it was the most bizarre experience because all, all the other times that I would yeah. really seen Rodney Smith, he was teaching me how to play a game through my TV. Did he teach you the solo mode or did he leave <laughs> you to discover that for he yourself? He left that to discover okay, that for myself. Okay. But it was just so, um, yes, by the way, I saw sorry. he literally went on a date with his wife and left us alone in his house, because I guess that's how good friends that's how he was. That's how safe your house is. Apparently. When Rodney Smith Apparently, when is Rodney in Smith there. Apparently, when Rodney Smith is in there, nothing's right. going to happen. Canadian yeah. R protects um, your home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, it, it, it was... Uh, it was just so such a surreal experience because mm. he has such a distinct voice, and it was hard to pay attention and learn the game because my brain kept saying, "Rodney Smith is teaching you how to play a game in person," right. and it was just really, really surreal. Uh, probably one of the most surreal moments of like th that beginning phase of when we were doing the show. Yeah, and I, I remember nothing about the game. I mean, I, I have played the game many times since then. Don't remember who won. Mm. Uh, I don't think it was me. Uh, probably it was probably Rodney Smith. Uh, all I remember is being taught the game, playing the game. I, I don't know. Being taught the game by Rodney Smith was like a very, very surreal experience. I think if I ever had Rodney Smith teaching me a game, I would only communicate to him like I would with my computer. I'd be like, pause. Yeah, Get sure. up and go to the bathroom. Sure. Resume. <laughs> every once in a while, just times two speed, Rodney. <laughs> sure. And every once in a while, just click on his nose. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Now you can play. <laughs> uh, number four. That was good. All right, my number four is Cosmic Encounter. Woo! Well, that's the game that Mike was in. Oh. No, that was a terrible game. This is the one with the designers of the game. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, 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 you guys really oh, went name oh, dropping. Everybody now. went right. name dropping. So I went to Cosmic Encounter Con. <laughs> Which <laughs> is that a thing? It was a one-time thing. Okay. So the All designers right. of the of it, they basically. I don't know if they fronted the money, but they browbeat Fantasy Flight into having this convention, which I think maybe a couple hundred people showed up to. It was Cosmic mm. Encounter. I love games. I'm very cautious to go to any convention that's one game, because <laughs> I played the game twice, and right. I'll go, and now we're good. Mm. We played Cosmic after, and that even happened here. After like the sixth game, I was like, what else we got? Mm -hmm. um, but one game at the very beginning, the designers were like, hey, let's just play a game. We're going to play with double powers. So it was the three designers, or two of the designers, one of their son, and then the three guys who developed the game, this new expansion had just come out, me and some random guy. 
and we played this game, and the random guy won. <laughs> and it was amazing because wow. with so many times in Cosmic, you go back like, oh, we'll win together, all three of us, four, to win a solo mm -hmm. in a big group. But for him, he beat, well, he beat me, that's no big deal, but to beat the designers and to beat the other guys, that's a great story. Mm -hmm. And I was there to see it happen. It just was a really great experience. I really liked that. And it turns out it was Brian Cranston. <laughs> <laughs> he was in his underwear. Brian Cranston. Yeah. <laughs> You're mixing stories here, but yes, okay. Yeah, what? No, that was what? a different game. You're thinking of the time we played Twilight Imperium. <laughs> oh, and I was in my underwear. That's right. Got it. <laughs> I've tried to forget that story. All right. Now you get to try and forget that story. <laughs> Thank Good you. Good luck. <laughs>
I don't even know where in New York City I was, somewhere in there, and playing this. Sipping a little something and playing Blue Moon, and I love that. Again, one of those experiences that I'm terrified <laughs> to try to recapture because it just was fun. It was just kind of like the right game with the right setting, with the right weather outside, mm. and the good vibe, and the whole thing just worked. And again, it's one of those things that sears into your mind all the pistons firing right. Mm. The game was fun, but the company and the place and the everything, you know. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed Blue Moon. I've always been a huge fan of this game. And then you put it in that atmosphere, that setting where yeah. everything comes together, and it's going to lead to a great memory. So, did the did the person you were playing with drop the card on the floor at any time? <laughs> okay, well, I wasn't going to mention it, but it, is, it was Sam Healy I was playing with, and at one point, Sam Healy reaches back and returns to me the card from Condottiera that he had stolen. Uh, uh -huh. No, no, it was not. It was uh, there was no crushing of cards. Okay, good. In this one, this is a good story. All right, good. Okay, All right. I'm happy for that's you. my number three. Uh, so. My number three uh, is is uh, the only involving a duplicate person, which is again my dad. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I could talk forever about my dad. has a much more fascinating life uh, than I do, uh, or did. Uh, he passed away a couple years ago. Um, but one of the things that he so he was a psychologist and he was also a um, a plant nature specialist. He used to have a, 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 a article called Wild Oats that was in the Vancouver Sun and mm -hmm. a couple other uh, papers that was syndicated. Uh, and he was a photographer for National Geographic. So when I was young, my dad would take me to amazing places to do a, amazing things out in the wilderness as he would take these uh, pictures. And one on one of these trips, uh, in the middle of nowhere, my dad and I going along, and another person in the absolute middle of nowhere <laughs> uh, by the name of Wade Davis. Now, Wade Davis is famous because he wrote the book, The Serpent and the Rainbow. Oh. About he, he, he was a anthropologist who was also a scientist who kind of discovered why, why the, the zombie, uh, the chemical mixture uh, that made zombies in uh, Haiti. And he's kind of known as kind of like the Indiana Jones of the anthropology world. Mm. And just happened to be in the same bizarre location of the world. And my dad knew him instantly. Now, they had never met. Mm -hmm. And he knew my dad. Mm. And I was blown away. I was about 14 that my dad would, like, somebody would, they would know him. And, and, and they got together like crazy. And we all played hearts. We had a deck of cards. Mm. And we played hearts in the middle of the wilderness. Wow. And just had this game. And it's, again, it's an, one of those things where the game was kind of unimportant to a certain extent. Yeah, right, right, but right. But it was that camaraderie of right. playing a game. Like it, like it brought everybody together. And I don't know if I ever said two words the yeah. entire time, but I what watched... this picture? You must have been this in is Canada. Apparently, uh, yes, this was in Canada. I did mention it was in Canada. It looked just like that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't in Haiti. Um, <laughs> uh, it, was, it, it was in Canada. Yeah. And uh, my listening on the to my dad tell crazy stories that I had never heard. Right. And hearing Wade Davis tell crazy stories that I had obviously never heard. And But just the two of them, like, exchanging war wounds, basically, mm. of this crazy Bear grillis s stuff that they had done throughout their lives wow. way before there was a Bear Gryllis. Uh, while playing hearts in the Canadian wilderness. Uh, and it, it is, that is exactly what it looks like to play hearts in the Canadian wilderness, I can wilderness, imagine. By the way. So, I have a question. Yeah. I don't want to be like a dummy like sure. all. Um, I was under the impression, and I feel yeah. like most of our people sure. watching are, that zombies aren't real. <laughs> I think so you were going so, yeah. you, so, you didn't see the movie Serpent and so, Lava? Go ahead. So in, in Haiti, there, there is, it's a, it's a pseudo-religious right. thing mm -hmm. where uh, people die or think that they have died, wake up in a coffin, claw their way out, and somebody claiming to be a 
uh, shaman. Or shaman. Uh, it's not shaman, but it's. Mm. I'm not exactly with a hungan or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly the, sure of the term. Uh, says I have risen you as a zombie, and here's why. And there's a particular chemical that they give people that induces a death-like state. Uh, and if you watch the movie Serpent in the Rainbow, a lot of it's not quite real, <laughs> but a, but a, but a lot of it is more accurate mm -hmm. than you'd than you'd think. Uh, from him telling him about it. Uh, and so he went to Haiti, discovered, Wade Davis did, uh, and discovered why people think they, they were zombies and how they were doing this, how they were tricking people into, because there was entire plantations in Haiti that people worked there as slaves because they thought they were zombies and they thought that they had been brought back from the dead. Because this chemical basically induces you into a, a death-like state. Yeah. Um, that makes a lot more sense. You were just like, oh, he discovered zombies yeah, and yeah. done. I was like, um, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I did, you both nodded your heads, and I was like, well, oh, well, no, I know I've the heard reference. of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah if you know the movie. The movie is a is, is a is a horror movie that's that's from a a actual uh, novel that was based okay. based on his true life experiences. Hmm. All right, my number three is a crossover with one of you two. Voodoo. Yeah. And it's your almost crossover. But which it's, one is it's it? Z. It's Z. Pandemic it's not. Oh. I, I, so I considered it's weird because I'm like, was it zero or one? I never even considered two. Yeah. <laughs> which is bad because two right. was fun. Two was great. But yeah. one was the first time we did it. But I'm going down with zero. And I'll tell you why. Because Pandemic Legacy Season Zero was the first breath of gaming oh, after the pandemic. You're right. It felt like. We were finally, we had not, that was the first game that we had played together, us with All Z. All four of us with Z, Since yeah. the pandemic started. You're right, I it did not It was a really big deal. That. I was just like so happy. You know what, I don't think we ever even, or if we did, I've forgotten, I don't think we even referenced that we were playing a game about a pandemic after. Well, I thought a little gauche, actually, but I mean. Yeah, no, like I don't think any of us were in that mind space at that, that time. But that one was but, less pandemic-y than yeah, the other ones yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. There's more spies and things like that. That's, and that's true. true. That's I true. did not remember, for, I didn't remember that. I don't kind know if of, you remember, Z, but you were like, so like, you were almost like, when you came in to play with us, you were almost giddy. Yeah. You really were. We were just like, we we're playing a game! Yeah, it was, yeah well, it, it was a long time, yeah. yeah. It was that and, that, that, and it was also a great experience and fun, but that was it. It was like, Yes, it was like that light at the end of a tunnel, right. long tunnel. So right. that was that was fun for me. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and I'd completely forgotten that. Oh, that's weird. Um, so, what was that little intro referencing? Do you think? The Midwest Annex? No, no, no. The 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 die rolling. Didn't uh, it? Star Wars. No, it looked like the Indiana Jones. Yes, that's really obvious. Well, I have a reason for asking. <laughs> I'm it. not falling into your trap. It's that's not a it's Star it's Wars. Not a joke or a gag necessarily. It was just I thought it was kind of. Uh, okay, telling. go ahead. Ask again. Ask again. Be so, what did that make you think of? Indiana Jones. Specifically, what? The temple of the face monkeys. I don't know Indiana Jones that well. I didn't all. realize it was that, a follow-up question. That, There's I the the look, I tried to serve you on a plan. A test. I'm sorry, right? I'm like, I'm here to help you, and suddenly you're like, <laughs> follow-up question. I wasn't ready for that. Okay, who's that stand-up comedian who's like goes to a concert uh -huh. and the guys in the band are like, who feels? Like a human tonight. And he goes, woo! And he's like the only one. And then he goes, yeah. the guys go, and who feels like an animal? And everybody, you know, goes nuts. And he's like, oh, I didn't realize that was a follow up question. Mm. I didn't realize it was another part, and I should have not felt like a human. That's what I just felt like. You got me. Wow. That destination was definitely worth the journey. We <laughs> Thank you. Okay, what do you want me to say? <clears throat> It's that famous opening sequence it's in that famous Raiders of the Lost Ark, Raiders, that's where, the one where you've got the, the rock, ball, and he's running, and then he finds Doc Ock with an arrow through his face. <laughs> that's true. Wow. This that, is was Doc Ock. that was Doc Ock. All of this to mention <laughs> that my number two gaming experience is playing Marvel Gloomhaven <laughs> Jaws of the Lion with Tom Vassell. Oh, that was... Like and we were playing <laughs> fully unrelated. Oh, that I know why. not. You okay, know why I picked it. That's a roundabout way. What, Mike? Right. 
So we, Mike has a list of mortal enemies. Z Garcia. <laughs> right. Sure. Uh, Joey Evans. You know, Osama Bin Laden. Comedy. <laughs> and, but his number one enemy, which is also coincidentally in Z's top ten, yep. although Z got beat by a pile of rocks, <laughs> Mike got beat by a, a rock. Singular a rock. singular rock. That's right. I'm this powerful character in Jaws of the Lion. Tom was Hatchet. Um, yes. I mm. was. Um, who's the who? Like kind of the the tanky type character. Like uh, who you were? Yeah. A uh, guy who can't hit a rock. Apparently not. <laughs> so what was happening is in in Gloomhaven and in Jaws of the Lion, you're not rolling dice to make attacks. You're mm. you're flipping cards. Mm -hmm. It's essentially the same idea, mm -hmm. but. I was having this particular scenario, which we, we was live, you can watch it if you really want to watch uh, an exercise in frustration, um, was I had to, in this scenario, defeat these rocks. These rocks were like turning in, you, you probably remember, you played it. All I remember is that I had to hit this it rock. Wasn't, they weren't turning anything. They weren't even bad guys. You just had to break rocks. I had to break rocks, right? <laughs> I had to break rocks in this scenario. Now, what I will tell you is that this is a game based off of mathematical probabilities. <laughs> yes, yes, I was okay? correct. Okay? This is what this, the whole game hinges upon. You can count on certain mathematical probabilities. You can, that's a framework that you can rely on, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the sky is blue. You pay taxes. Mathematical probabilities on cards. Mm -hmm. I broke every law of science. I, I could not draw a success. It was mathematically impossible for me to do as poorly as I did, and yet somehow, you I did, did it. it. You did it, yeah. You and achieved the impossible. I did. I achieved the impossible. I could not break a singular rock with all of the weapons at my disposal. I couldn't do it. You're that bad. I could not break a rock. And so now, it's constantly, every time that we're alive, <laughs> yeah, somehow, true. a reference to me and rocks comes up. Mm-hmm. Very memorable. You also played against box of rocks, though. I did. And lost that. I lost he lost that to too. one rock. He lost to one to a box of rocks. One oh, stupid rock. That was me. You don't remember that? I try not to. <sighs> we played this game where you shake a yeah. box of rocks and answers a random trivia question. I played it, yeah. And then you answer it, and Z was losing <laughs> to the rocks. Constantly. Yeah, it's literally, like, there's a box with two rocks, <laughs> and on one side they have like a yes, and on the other side they're blank. Two rocks in there. No, there's You're numbers. asked a question. They're picking a number from one to three. No, no, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. The rocks have like a dot or nothing or right, whatever. Yeah. And you're asked a question. The question has an answer of zero, one, or two. You answer, then you shake the rocks, <laughs> and they answer. Blanks, one, or both. And I kept losing to these sentient, terrifying rocks. Is that okay. your number two, I hope? No, that's uh, my 11. Let's call right. it my 11. My number two is, um, what is my number two? I wrote the game, but I don't remember what the, I it wrote a, down pandemic. It was a real number two experience. What was Eric? it? At, at That's Gun? it, yes, thank you. Jeez, I'm like, what, what am I talking about? <laughs> yes, uh, my number two was playing in the Pandemic Tournament. Oh, yeah, at, yeah, yeah. It's called a Pandemic Survival, they call it, uh, at Gen Con, this event right here. And this is just a little screen capture from footage that we have up of the event. Oh, I was there and watched it. You were there and you watched it. That's right, and you recorded some of it. So it's this thing, which I don't know if they still do, but they would prepare all these copies of Pandemic with identical setups and an identical deck. And they're the ones actually that draw the cities for you as you populate the bad stuff. And then you try to last as long as you can or win. And every turn is sort of, you know, counted. Is everybody done? Okay, next turn. And they flip over cards and call them out. And it was just very memorable, very interesting to see all these people really like digging in also, very terrifying, and I will never want to do it again. <laughs> it was. They gave you three minutes. Super entertaining to watch. It is so intense. Yeah, <laughs> that it was. But Eric and I are in there in the trenches, man, and we're yeah. like, oh, you want to do this? How about this? Okay, yeah. No, let's go with that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We're like looking around. There's like a team over there who just lost, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, ah! <laughs> And somebody comes in with like a stretcher and pulls them out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, yeah. Definitely, though, that's like Eric is pretty so a calm intense. guy. He and Z were so stressed, mm -hmm. and they were so because they would be like, so would be like, 
cure the disease. And you're like, well, we haven't done that yet. No. And it's so weird because you go, look, you would think that boards would look similar. They all look completely different. Right. And Wild. everyone has the same roles. They have the same cards. It's crazy. But I was just, I had to walk away because I would laugh sometimes. But even I was getting nervous for you guys because yeah. you look so tense. Yeah, yeah. No, it was really so. They something. won their first round, but then you lost in the second round. Is that what it was? Well, I don't you even qualified remember. for the second round, and then you lost. And then we lost. Round. Okay, yeah. I really don't remember. I know we didn't get very far. We mm. we did okay. We didn't do that well, but it was so intense. Again, it's it's the kind of event that I'm like, I respect the way you do this event and how you run it, and people who are good at it. I refuse. <laughs> you know what I mean? I did it once for the yeah. experience, and it was a perf a perfectly memorable experience. It's just terrifying. I don't want that kind of pressure. You know. Um, but I loved it, and doing it with Eric really was very fun, and I, I loved sharing that with him. I really enjoyed that. So that's my number two. All right, so uh, my number two also involves somebody in this room. Uh, that's, that's Tom. Whee! Oh, that's uh, crap, then. And, mm. and uh, my, uh, so back when we were set to film the show, uh, again, uh, back when it was for a streaming service, uh, we filmed. It for, we were set to film in front of a live studio audience. So we had filmed a bunch of the stuff that we had filmed uh, in different locations, and then we were going to film uh, uh, the rest. You know, the majority of it in front of a live studio audience. So originally, we were supposed to film that at Machinima Studios uh, in Los Angeles, and literally the day before, we are loading sets in. The day before, we were to shoot all this. Warner Brothers, who had just bought Machinima Studios a few uh, uh, months before, calls up Machinima Studios and says, yeah, I'm, shut everything down. We're closing you down. So, and they're like, well, we got rentals. And said, shut everything down. Everything shut down. And so they're like, uh, <laughs> don't know what to tell you, but we have to shut everything down. And and you can't get too mad because everybody here has just lost their jobs right, completely. Right, right. So, but at the same time, you're like, I'm calling my lawyer. Like, can they do that? <laughs> and the lawyer's like, Well, they're Warner Brothers. They can do pretty much whatever they want. Mm -hmm. You could go to war with Warner Brothers, but you know, you're <laughs> still right. not you're still not filming tomorrow, right, basically. Right, right, right. And so I'm like, Well, I got people coming from all over the place here, mm -hmm. and one of those people was Tom. And I already bought them tickets. <laughs> They're, you know, about to get on the plane. So I call up everybody and I basically say, you know, you can, you can, the tickets paid for. If you want to come to Los Angeles, you can. But really, there's everybody else said, no, I'm just going to stay home. <laughs> and Tom's like, yeah, I'll come. <laughs> well, I had a suitcase of games back that I needed to <laughs> test out. <laughs> so, wow. what am I supposed to? That's great. And at the time, again, I told you, uh, I was very, I mean, Tom was one of those heroes of mine that I yeah. watched all the time, and I was really excited. Yeah, you were kind of so in a depressed mood when I showed I up was, because I was like, yeah, it was, a rough, it was a rough period of time because I had to move heaven and earth to try and make it happen, and I had to put everything off for a month. Mm. It was very expensive to do that. Uh, but, um, and so while you were there, um, we were hanging out. And you being there actually made me feel much better. Like, like I, I, I don't know if it felt to you at the time that you being there made me much, feel better, but at the time it eased my depression. But then one morning, I pick him up from the hotel, and he's like, uh, hey, uh, Trey Parker just texted me. And I said, what? <laughs> Trey Parker from South Park? Yeah, Trey Parker texted me. He wants to know if we want to go play games with him. And I'm like, and he said, no, but I convinced him fine. No. I said, do you know Trey Parker? <laughs> He's like, no. But apparently he watches the show and I told you know people I was in LA, so he just got in touch with me. And he's like, should should we go? And I'm like, Are you kidding yes, me? You should go. <laughs> well, yeah, but he, what, what, you fooled me out, not him. So. I know, but I'm like, of course Trey Parker's just asking you randomly mm -hmm. if if you if if you want to go play games. So of course. So we drove over to South Park Central. And we played we played games that day with Trey Parker, and they were all um, bad games because mm -hmm. I had brought them in right. suitcase. <laughs> right, they weren't great games. Right. Uh, but Trey uh, gave us a tour of the, of yeah. the place and, and showed how how he, how he made the show, and gave us a bag of goodies, I guess, uh, from the show and stuff. And uh, that's uh, cool. It was yeah, a really 
fun. Also ended up with Kenny. But it yeah. was a, yeah. <laughs> oh, shocking. It was a really fun day. He was really nice. He was like super, hey, that's super the picture. Yeah. He There's is us super there. nice. That's a cool table they yeah. had. That's a uh, whole wall of snacks. I still remember that. Mm-hmm. And he was the nicest guy and was super excited to meet you. And I was just glad to be there. Mm-hmm. And I, I just had a ball. Um, uh, being between these two guys, uh, and it was it was it was a lot a lot of fun for me. It was a really fun day. That's very cool. The coda to the story that Travis doesn't want to mention is that Tom ended up staying at your house for two years. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. When the pandemic hit, he said, "You mind if I stay here?" <laughs> I had a like, lot of games. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that that was the better trip of the two? When I came out the second time, I was like. We gotta work. I was like, Fine. And also, when you came the second time, I didn't have any time to spend with you. you did not. I was, I was doing the show. So, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. All right, my number two is another legacy game, Ooh. and this is very similar to your story. This is Queensdale, and me playing it with my kids oh, during yeah. 2020, because what happened was we we all got stuck at home, and I said, well, I been wanting to play Queensdale. We had played it before, but we only got halfway. Yeah, we couldn't finish like, nah, it. Yeah. This may be a game my kids would like. And so I played it with three of my daughters. One, who pretty much never wants to play board games. But she had no other options in the world. And she was like, fine, I'll play. <laughs> and she got the most interesting. In fact, she won the whole campaign. It was not one of these two. This is Holly and Violet. I mean, I mean, it's, Ru- it's Ruby and Violet. <laughs> They're not watching. They'll never know. Um, Holly's the one who won. You two still know their names, all of them, or not really? <laughs> <laughs> They're not watching. It's no, okay. No. Melly, Amy, Melly, Amy, Holly, Clara, Violet, Ruby, Jimmy, and Jack. All right. All right. I did miss. I don't know if I missed one or not. What's your social? <laughs> Five, five, five. No, five, no. There's this three-digit number on the back of your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> it's meaningless. Can you tell it to me? <laughs> well, my first dog's name, <laughs> Judy. All right. Anyway, but it was, we only did it once a week because I was still coming to the studio and doing stuff. So I acted like I had a normal life to some degree. But then on Sunday after uh, we watched church online, mm-hmm. we ate lunch. It was like, we have nine hours left. So we played just yeah. once a week. I think we played two games back to back each time just because cool. it tear down That's and set cool. up. But it was a really great experience. So like it a nice. lot. Nice. Queensdale. <laughs> Tom, okay, you did well did, there. That didn't occur to me. That, that, that's a critical that, miss. That's a critical miss. That's a critical yeah. miss. Yeah. Now, the worst thing that could happen to you in a game. But Oh, they'll find out this next Thursday we're doing an RPG again. Oh, nice. nice. We haven't rolled any ones yet. I'm I'm ready. Yeah, don't I'm ready certainly don't want to jinx the, the, the group there. All right. I'm the, I'm the, that's true. That's, you do want to jinx the crew. All right, my number one is one that I almost consider I'm like, ah, is this too obvious? But no. Th- look, I lead a very lucky life, right? I've been able to turn a love of mine, a hobby that I love, into a, a career, right? My life is revolves around something I love doing. And I never would be here if it was not playing Catan for the first time. Uh, that's wow. the game that got me into hobby board gaming. And so the first time I played, back then it was known as the Settlers of Catan, um, was a, a, a life-changing experience in many ways. I had you know, played games before. I played Pinochle at my grandmother's house and played Sorry and Monopoly. I don't know whose cat that is. I just found a picture. Uh, Wait, this is not even your cat? No, no. This is just a random cat. This cat wasn't at the first time you played? Well, no, seriously, because <laughs> it's sitting in one of the newer boxes, right? That just oh, that's a poser cat. Right, exactly. Web of lies. Yeah, that's, that's exactly that right. Lies. Everything I know is... is it's every, the reprint cat. It's the reprint cat. That's a 3D printed cat. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, AI cat. I was, um, I had played, I had played, you know, Monopoly, sorry, all those types of games. Uh, I had done a little bit of D&D in, in junior high and in high school. Uh, junior high is what they called it out and out there, uh, California. Um, but not really, I didn't know this existed. I had no idea that this existed. I played that game and my mind was blown. I thought about it that night. I woke up thinking about it. I couldn't wait to play it again. It wasn't our copy of the game. I, you know, um, The concept of victory points. Never heard of it before. Yeah. Uh, variable setup. 
no idea. The, the trading even. I mean, there have been mass market games that do that pit and things like that, but the way it was handled here was completely different. It just changed my, my perception of what gaming could be. And that's what led me down the rabbit hole. The first game I ever bought was Lost Cities. Um, you know, it was the first thing that got me into a hobby board gaming store. Um, and, and literally my life changed that day. So that's my most memorable experience. I still remember the game, that first game I played. So, uh, you know, to me, maybe it seems too obvious, but no, it's, got, it's my number one gaming experience because it's basically changed the course of my life. So there you go, number one. Let me tell you about something that changed the course of my life. Mm. This is the day I was born. Oh! So there I am playing a little euchre. <laughs> <laughs> euchre! And my mom calls and she says, I'm taking you to the hospital. <laughs> And so she jumps on the back of a. The there was a phone in the womb. She yeah. jumps on the back she of a donkey cart. Mm -hmm. the phone. <laughs> like, like, Hello, mama. Long story short, she didn't make it to the hospital. I was born on the back of a donkey cart. All right. With a deck of cards Harvard. in one hand <laughs> and, and a juice. bottle of vodka in the other. Wouldn't it be rum? Let's go with vodka. <laughs> okay. Okay. So and the, the bottle phone. What is and your I, number one? My number one is. <laughs> Involves you as well, and it was, again, one of those incredibly memorable sort of, this game is different stories. And it was playing Time Stories for the first time. Oh, yeah, Playing st true. Time Stories for the first time. I had already been a gamer and played a lot of games at this point, but I remember the first time this came in. Oof. And we... Yeah, that right there is it. Oof. That's a picture of my mom. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> On the back of the donkey cart. Okay. I can see the resemblance. Donkey, oh, not picture. Oh, my word. Okay. Um, uh. She's not watching. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can still name both my parents, so it's good. Uh, I'll never forget yeah. that moment, though, when we figured out that final puzzle. Like the lights. Oh, just amazing. Like, again, mm -hmm. this idea of we start playing, we line up these cards, and we're like, I'm going to visit here, I'm going to visit there. And I remember the very first room where I grabbed the card and I read the little story, and there's a painting there, and the game's like, you can't, t you can describe what's going on, but you can't show it to people unless they also go there. And, and you're in this insane asylum, and you're like, I'm like, there's a painting on the wall, guys. Again, this all sounds kind of pedestrian now. But back then. When this game first came out, there was not this deluge of mm -hmm. story-driven, escape room, solve a puzzle in the middle of your Euro game stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It just wasn't a thing. So this incredibly immersive thing where I'm like looking at a painting and I'm describing it and I'm playing one of these characters. I'm like, well, no, you're like a, a futuristic person deposited inside this person mm -hmm. in a different time period. And then the time runs out. We run out of time and whoop, 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 you are reset to your future, you know, sci-fi setting and dropped back into these bodies earlier in the day so that the same things are happening, but you've been here already. So you know which things to do and which things to not do. You know the outcomes of certain things. So you don't need to do them again. This stuff was mind-blowing stuff. This is one of the few times I played a game, and immediately upon finishing that play, I went to BGG and rated it a 10. Boom. Mm, yeah. Like, immediate 10. Unbelievable experience. And, and for those of you who have played, like, because I know you guys did, and I did, through like all the time stories. Okay, well let's not ruin it. <laughs> I'm, on high. I'm, first, first, yeah. I'm on a high. I'm on a high right game. here. Okay, yeah. this is the only thing that ever came out for this game. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I really, I just again, it was mind blowing and um, incredibly memorable. And there were a couple of good expansions. <laughs> it's no longer a ten. Mm -hmm. It's no I, longer a I, ten I, at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. It. Whatever you say, for your number one, I'm gonna ruin it now. Yeah, what do you People get? Like, oh, I played a game with my brother. I'm like, he'll get old sometimes. I'm very distracted yeah, that fine. both your watches are telling you you need to stand up. I think you need to listen <laughs> we've been, to your watches. We've been doing this top ten list a long time. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, my number one, and I went back and forth about on this and back and forth on this, uh, but trying to think of like what was the most amazing actual experience. 
And uh, for me, I think, and, and many of you out there also probably had something like this, it was my first really long Dungeons and Dragons mm. game. It was uh -huh. it was three full years. Uh, now wow. this game outlived a marriage that was, <laughs> but but they still played. Wow! Right? They broke up in real life, but still played the game. <laughs> like wait, it, wait, they were married. Yeah, they split. In fact, the game started at their house. We moved it from their house because they were, and they worked things out enough to still play in the game. Yeah, but the marriage dissolved. I mean, uh, uh, huh. two of them graduated college. Uh, like all these um, things that happened. One of them had a child. Like, it, like so many like things happened. The game? Not during the game. Not no. It was, it was on a donkey, donkey car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like all these big life things happened. Like while we were playing this game, and the char and the characters went from first level to 18th level mm. in that one campaign. Uh, and the final game that we played. With all those people there, finishing this arc, this three-year arc, was something that's almost impossible to yeah. ever duplicate again. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was such a powerful experience. People were crying mm -hmm. at, at, at the end of the game just because it, not so much that what happened was super sad, but that that chapter of mm -hmm. our lives was over. Because mm -hmm. I was about 22, I think, when this ended. So I went from 19 to 22 during that period of time. Mm -hmm. And it was just... Were you the... I was the DM for it. Were. Yeah. Uh, and it was just, it was just, we knew kind of at that moment, mm -hmm. we're probably never going to have this happen again. Yeah, Because yeah. we were young enough also that we played... We played all weekend a few yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, we had those capabilities during those college years of putting ridiculous amounts of energy and time into it. And uh, we knew also that in a lot of cases, because a few of the people actually uh, drove in from other cities they had moved to wow. for those last couple games. Because one, one of the people who had graduated had a new job in San Jose. So the last four games he played, he drove in two and two hours wow. every single game because he didn't want to miss the end, right? Mm -hmm. And we just knew, you know, we probably won't know each other yeah. like this again. So that for me was my number one experience, the final final game of a three-year campaign in Dungeons and & Dragons. Wow. And uh, I still talk to those people, and when we get together, we still talk about that wow, game. It was just, great. just a huge part of our lives. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. All right, my number one happened back in 2008. And up to that point, this also happened at Origins. I had gone to Origins, and I had a good time. But one of my favorite things to do to Origins was to go and play in Wits and Wagers. Mm. We always played, and I, I would... Pick a, they would they would run a Wits and Wagers game show, which I thought was really fun and cool. Uh, the first year we got yelled at by some <laughs> Euro gamers nearby because we were being too raucous. Oh wow! And then the the next year after that we got yelled at because um, again we were being too raucous um, <laughs> uh, by Euro gamers. It was right. the same thing. And okay. the third year I was very disappointed when it didn't happen. Mm. But the third year I asked them, can can me and Eric run it? You know, because I thought, hey, maybe we could do a Wits and Wager show. That would be fun to do. Um, and it was such a good time. It was the first time we did it. And me and Eric really meld well together for Wits and Wagers. Mm -hmm. He's just such a good announcer for that. And I'll never forget this. All kinds of shenanigans happened. There was an anti-vassal team that showed up. <laughs> Uh, headed by Alan Moon and Joe Stedman. <laughs> um, there was uh, all kinds of nonsense craziness. Our final question was something about Michael Jackson, and, and, and he died like two days before. Oh, my god! You know, we did this. We're like, should we pull the question? Should we pull right. it? Uh, no, it's still a trivia question about him. And it was just a... It worked, you know. We were wow. like, uh... But it was such a good experience. And I found out that if I ever do stop board game reviewing, I would like to be a game show host. Mm. Um, that's probably never going to happen. But I like doing it. We've done a lot of Wits and Wagers games over the years. There's been really good ones. We've had a marriage proposal happen a couple of yeah, years ago in one. That's right. But that that first one was really spectacular. I still I just like doing that. I mean, we've done some game shows. I mean, what a couple of years ago we did one in front of a water show thing that on a cruise. Amazing, yeah. We've done one where we were <laughs> skating on skates, which, as Zia said in many of his things, we'll never do that again. Well, and you didn't I even skate. For that. I did not skate. No ice skating, mm -hmm. mind you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and More like ice circling. <laughs> we've run a lot of shows. We've had great shows. We've had decent shows. And I almost put 
I, but this is a game, right? This yeah. is a game. I, I would have probably put the the first music show we did because I'll never forget that either. Sure. But that, but this was a game, a Woods and Wagers game. So that's my number one. Nice. There you go, folks. Two Whoa. hours and three minutes worth. Woo! You got your money's of worth. Stories. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? I said that there was no more uh, live stuff, but there is. Uh, two weeks ago, we did our top ten party games, mm -hmm. and I said I think I could make a top one hundred list. So I, I went home and did it because I wanted to see if I could. <laughs> so I have 90 more party games. I'm going to give those to you live tomorrow morning with the running commentary of the friendliest sort by Mike Delisio. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I got all my negativity out today. <laughs> so be nothing but positive tomorrow. <laughs> you were positive today. You were like gloating. Although you got worse in your games as the list went by, I noticed. Yes, that is true. The the, the higher up they were, the the poorer. You probably lost I, that first Catan game. Oh, 100%. I think I put my starting village like next to a 12. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A 12, it was a 12-2 desert. 12-2, yeah. <laughs> like, yes, yeah, that's right. That is the spot that looks, to go. That looks like a nice visit. <laughs> yeah, I, I like even numbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Travis, for coming on board. Thank you for having me. Go watch their channel, Above Board TV, and keep in mind, you'll see them again soon, because in a couple weeks, we're doing our 12 games of Christmas list mm. so that you can prepare properly for the holidays. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back then. See you all tomorrow. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delisio. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Travis Oates. And Mike still can't beat a rock. I can't. No chance. <laughs> <laughs>